Good morning. I'm John Cole Morgan, and welcome to Sewing Street on what's a bit of a wet, miserable day here. But I'm very excited today because we've got lots of exciting things happening. Ten o'clock is our design roll race, so I'm really hoping you're going to join us for that. Um, we'll have a little bit of a recap between each of our shows between um, nine and ten, sorry, eight and nine and nine and ten, just as to what you needed to get ready for us. And we're going to start on at ten o'clock. But the next bit of exciting news is our website. Um, we've been doing some wonderful adjustments on our website so I'm going to be able to guide you through what we've done now because right, right. hmm? what we've done oh computers on live telly where's my little mouse there's my little mouse so what we've done you'd enter the usual website address of www.sewingstreet.com and then you'd go down and you'll be able to see there's me let me move that in the right there we go you'll see there's me um, or JB or Vix or whoever. However, now we've got this wonderful function where you can shop our catalog. So if you click on that, you're going to get about eight or nine different catalog um, areas where we are the what you're able to purchase. There we go. So you can see we've got fabric panels, we've got books and patterns, we've got pattern fabric, plain fabric, our fabulous block of the week. I'm so excited about that. Um, so various kits. So if we click on kits, oh, if I open that, it click the right button, doing everything backwards, you'll then be able to go in and see all of our different kits that we've got. And you'll be able to go through all the way through here and be able to see it. We just thought it was a bit easier to be able to make the website a bit easier for you to find things. So you'll be able to see we've got all our bundles, all our blocks of the week in the different colours. Um, we've got the orange log cabin bundle, which I used a few uh, days ago with regards to one of our tools. Uh, oh, we've also got our Soline glue refill. Oh, that's oh, I need some of that. So there we go. You'll be able to be able to check that out on our website, all up and updated and ready to go for you. So that will be ready for you when you want to use it. So it's nice to be able to have things a bit updated and get things going. The, because you're here with us very early this morning, you're very lucky. You're going to be able to hear about our early bird special first before anybody else. This is a fantastic fabric strip panel that we've got today. Brand new, exclusive to Sewing Street. And look at this. Look at those gorgeous colours, how they gradiate from the blue to the red and all the way. Oh, it's just so cleverly done. These are our usual fabric strips that you've got. Um, you'll be able to see we're going from the red all the way through to the blue. And this is a wonderfully good price today for $12.99. You've got 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, yeah, 16, just wanted to double check. 16 two and a half inch strips. And our fa um, fabric strips are actually 55 inches wide rather than the standard 43 inches you'd get normally. And you can just see how much fabric you're getting for that for $12.99. That is a really good deal in my opinion. And just such a lovely, lovely product. And if you're looking at our design roll race later today um, and you wanted to take part in it, you'd need a minimum of two of these to be able to make a, a reasonably good sized quilt. Um, if you made one, it would just be very, very skinny and very long, uh, which is, doesn't proportionally work very well. But this is a a fabulous little panel bundle in order for you to be able to take part in that as well. And at that price, what a great offer. So there we go, that's our early bird special for this morning. Brand new and exclusive to Sewing Street. I hope you'll be able to enjoy that. And here we have this wonderful big red blob. Looks like a blob, but it's not a blob. We've got the fabulous Elna 680 Plus. And what I've done is I've taken the whole box and I've unpacked absolutely everything from the box to be able to show you exactly what you're going to get but also then to be able to explain certain things to you that you may not know already. So the very first thing you're going to get with it, this fabulous cover. Can't go wrong with that. You've got this little um, pocket here you can lift up, be able to pick the handle up, I'll show you there. So you'll easily be able to get the handle up and move those things along. You've got all these po um, pockets at the back as well. Um, you know I love a pocket in a bag. You can pop your um, instruction manual very easily in the back here. Whoops. In the back there. And then in the front, you've got space of all these different compartments. You can put various bits and bobs. And I can show you there, you've got these three little compartments to put everything in. And then when you're not wanting to use the machine, it's just a very pretty decorative thing to have 
on the side, you know, if you're being forced to go off the kitchen table or dining room table, lovely little cover for it, because we all love a good cover. So then we've got our wonderful instruction manual, and I love a good instruction manual. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you this fabulous little table. Get this wonderful extension table. Um, and first thing before we start as well, obviously the one thing that is so fantastic with this deal is you're getting a five year warranty on the machine, um, on parts and labour. Five years and that is now coming as an exclusive offer with Sewing Street on a limited number of machines. So if you are interested in getting that, you would definitely you'd be able to get that on this deal. If we then brought the machine back, which is also exclusive to Sewing with Street, but the offer that we've got at the moment expires, the five-year warranty is not going to be included in the deal. So that's just something to bear in mind, and you would need to pay extra for that if you did that going forward. So the first thing you're going to do is we're going to take off our usual little drawer, and I'm going to come back to that in a little while. And you've got these this fantastic extension table. But what I love about this extension table is how easy it is to put these feet on. So you plop that in there, so you can see you're just literally plopping it in, and you rotate it. Oh. And that's it. You're just gently rotating it, not even a, a tenth of a rotation, all four of them in. <clears throat> but you've also got this little thing. Now, I've always seen these and thought, what on earth is that? Oh, well, I'll just leave it in the box until I need it. And I never knew what it was. And I found out what you do in your extension table. There's a little, I'm going to call it a little Dubry Wattsity thing. It plops in there. And then when you pop that onto your extension, when you pop your extension table onto your machine, oops. When you pop that, oh, it's come out, sorry. Live telly, what could possibly go wrong? There we go. So you've got that nice and rested in that little hole there. And then when you pop the extension table on, you normally won't have all these bits lying in the way. You plop it on, it rests on there. But now I've got this wonderful little mat, which I'll be talking about later. So I need to get a bit more height on it. So all I'm doing is I'm just unscrewing, I'm unscrewing these feet. I don't think I'm doing that correctly, and I am. So you just unscrew these little feet as you go along to get the extra height that you need. And it's really just as simple as unscrewing it. And it slots on really easily. And you can see I'm now completely at the height I need to be. And you just move that all the way around the machine and adjust the height of your feet all the way around until you get the height that you want. And this one's perfect. Oh, I'm doing that one up. So that gives me the height. And what you're looking to do is to get this table exactly even with your machine. And you just keep turning these around until you get to that height, which is fantastic. Really, really lovely feature. But also that little Dubry Watsity thing, what that is, is that's your support for the back of the machine. So if you didn't have that bit in, your table wouldn't be very secure. But that's a really sweet little piece that you just need to remember that you've got. So I don't use the um, extension table. Oh, and to take it off, all you're doing is you see this bit here? You lift that up a little bit and slide it across. And it's like a little, um, it's a little what's it that you go into. You can see there, you've got a little piece of plastic that goes behind it. That's the little piece of plastic that I'm talking about. That'll go behind it. So you're just lifting that out of the way. And you know you're connected once um, that little bit's gone past it. So that's what that little bit's for. So when you open your box and you've got that funny little bit, and you're not quite sure what it is, like I have, that's what it says. So that's a really cute little extension table. And I'm going to pop that over here where there's a little bit of space. And then normally what you would have is this fantastic little box with all its little compartments that you would then normally have on here as a standard machine. So that's what I'm going to leave on for today. You can put it on however you like. So what I'm going to do now, if you don't mind, I'm going to refer to my manual because I don't know every single foot off the top of my head and it gives you this wonderful instruction book for the manual. And then I'm going to rotate the machine as well because I want to show you these fabulous little pockets. 
If you lift this up, you can see you've got these fabulous little pockets here, and these little slots roll forward to be able to show you what goes where. And then you've got this wonderful little combination of bits and bobs. So the first one we've got over here is, I think that's number 20, it is, um, and that is this little thing. So that is this little thing, it's called number 20. Now I have never seen this before be in my life, I have no idea what it does. So anybody who's more um, knowledgeable than I am, perhaps you can let me know what a circular pivot pin is. But anyway, whatever it is, it's got its own little slot and it slots beautifully in there. So this is, in case you didn't catch what I was doing there, this is the Elna Excellence 680 Plus. Um, and I'm just now, I've unpacked everything. Everything that was loose in the box is now on the table to be able to show you exactly what it is. Because what I love about this machine is you've got all these wonderful little storage spaces to be able to keep everything in the little compartments and things that you've got, which I love. I think that's a really cute feature. So all I've done now is I've put in the circular pivot pin, which I don't know what it is, so forgive me for that. But this one I do know. This is the A foot, which is the general purpose sewing foot, the zigzag foot. That's what I always use on my machine. And then you just slot that in there. Oh, I've got it in upside down, that's why. But you slot that in there and you can see it just beautifully slots in. And when that's full, you slide it back. It's just perfect. Then we've got our M foot, which is the overcast foot. Um, I'm not going to pretend to know what that is, because as you know, I'm only a quilter. And quilter, I'm not quite sure we'd ever use an overcast foot. And if we do, please let me know. And I'm... But that lives in there. And then we've got our D foot. Uh, no, that's our O foot. Our D foot, which is our rolled hem foot. That goes nicely and snugly in there. And then you slide that back in, and it just looks so neat. Then we've got our E foot, and this is our zipper foot. Um, I have put a zip in once, it was terrible, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, and then we've got our F foot, which is our satin stitch foot, which we're gonna be using later. And where have I put it now? Where are you, Mr. F foot? It's on my machine, that's what it is. There we go. So that's our F foot there. I was stitching something earlier for you for a demo. And that slots in there. So you can see the main feet that you would use, because I certainly use that one all the time, and the F foot. Those are your main feet. And then it's just discreetly hidden away behind everything, which I think is just genius. I absolutely think that's a really clever design feature on that. Uh, with the machine, obviously, as well, you get your normal standard knee lifter, which goes in there. And I can't put that up because, obviously, at the angle we've got the table, that's not going to work. So you've got your knee lifter there as well. And then we've got this, which is um, an, a, an extra spool... Um, what do they call it? Extra spool pin. That's what it was, spool pin. And what you're popping that in this little section over here... There's a little space on the top of the machine to put that in. So this is if you're doing twin needles, um, or if you want to be lazy and you want to do this and you thread a bobbin as well, you can then pop the spool on here and wind your bobbin, winding it through there. But also if you're doing a twin needle, that's where you would normally put the second spool of thread on. But what I love, look at this. You've got this fabulous little slot on the side of your machine here. Because these are a bit awkward, you're never quite sure where to put them, but look. It just slots perfectly in there. And that's it, it's done. That's you done. That's your little thing stored away. Love it. Then we've got our straight stitch plate. Most of you who have used these machines before know you get straight stitch plates and you get creative stitch plates. This is your straight stitch plate and that one you would just use for normal straight stitching. It's, it's, it is what it says on the tin. But at the bottom of the box, they've got this fabulous little compartment where you then just slide your straight stitch plate on. Genius, love it. Then we've got our buttonhole foot. Um, 14, just double check, the automatic buttonhole foot. And then this is the, f the stabilizer plate for the buttonhole foot. So I would keep those together simply because I'm famous for losing things. And that slots in nicely over here. So you've got the pin in, that you, the spare pin that you've got, and then you can slot this in however you feel comfortable. I'm gonna put it in the way I had it. There we go. And that just lives nice and neatly in there. 
I think it's genius. Then as a, for this deal as well, you're gonna be getting a walking foot. So your walking foot slides in nicely there as well. You're gonna get this fantastic set of needles. Now, many of you have used these needles before, but I'm just gonna go through the needles and tell you what you're getting. This is a two millimeter twin needle. So what you would do for that is if you're gonna be doing some form of applique, um, this is what you would use this foot for, uh, this needle for. Um, and there's a different, before you use that needle, make sure you change the adjustments on your machine. There is a button here that tells you how to do that. Then you've got your blue tipped needles. Now blue tip needles are usually for um, embroidery, decorative stitches, um, so anything that requires fine detailed work. Then we've got our purple top stitch, um, and I hadn't seen a purple top, top stitch before, but this is for very stretchy heavy fabrics, heavy knits and things like that. Um, so you would be doing it for that. And then you've got your red needle, and the red needle is going to be for your metallic threads. Um, if you're doing decorative using metallic threads, that's what your red needle is. So you're going to get um, those needles for, included in the bundle as well. And then automatically they just slot beautifully into your little compartment there as well. And to check that you're not overloading your compartment, which I've just seen that I have with my walking foot. I'm going to turn my walking foot on its side. So this machine, I have to say, I did wonder when I started with it, is would it be good for a beginner, would it be good for intermediate or advanced? I think this machine is one of those ones that you would actually grow into. It's really good for a beginner because it's got all the, di the dials over here which will stop you using the wrong foot, it'll stop you doing anything wrong, but it's also then something that you'd be able to then grow into and become more confident with. Because I think if your machine helps you along your journey, I think that would then make you a lot more confident as a beginner. So it's just a really fabulous little machine in that way. So you've the um, sorry, I'm getting a bit uh, the the bobbins distracted me there. Sorry about that. Um, so of course, buying with Elner as well, you are able to be then getting a fantastic customer care system. Um, they're based in Stockport, I think, or well, Stockton on Tees, um, but they're partnered with Genomi. So it's a combination company. It's a sister company of each other. Um, so they're then offering the five-year warranty and you've got a really great call center. If you've got any issues or problems, you can call into as well. Um, top tip though, make sure you keep your box. If anything does go wrong, you will need your box that you need to send it back to them. So hang on to your boxes. I know most of us hang on to them anyway, but it is something that you do need to do. So now we popped in our walking foot and our buttonhole foot and our uh, stitch, uh, extra stitch pin. You've now got this lovely tray and on top of the tray, you've got this foot, which is your G foot which is your blind hemming foot. Now I can safely say I've never used one of those, but there you go. Then you've got your F2 foot, which is your open toed satin foot. This is a really lovely foot to be able to do um, any form of stitching with, because you can easily see what you're doing with the foot because it's open toed. The usual F foot that you have as your satin stitch foot is this one here. And you can see that that doesn't have the open toes. So that's the F foot, where this one's the F2 foot, where you'll be able to see that you've got the much better line of vision as to where you're going with the F2 foot than you do with the F foot. And again, that just slots nicely into this little tray over here. The one I use the most is my quarter inch foot. So that one there has another little slot there ready for you to use. And then we have our T foot, which is the button sewing foot. So that one then also lives in there. So now you've got all these lovely bits and bobs. You've also got the, um, the when you've got your thread on the top of your machine, that's the sewing, the thread cap over there. So I'm using the little one because I've got a little bobbin. You get two of those as standard. And then you've also get two big ones as well as standard. So you can then pop those in your little tray over there. And then you've got the usual unpicker. You've got your um, screwdriver, you've got your stylus. The stylus is really important if you don't want to be touching your screen. The stylus lives at the top over here and it's just got this lovely little clicking mechanism that gets you in there. The unpicker I've mentioned and oops, you've also got the little brush. So when you take the plates off and you need to do some admin and cleaning, you've got your um, brush to be able to do that as well. 
You've then got your, you've, we've already spoken about the walking foot. Let me get that back out again, because I forgot to mention the gauges. You've got your walking foot here, and then what you do with the walking foot, you'll do it, your first line of stitching, and then you'll put your gauge in. And I always put this in the wrong place. I think your gauge goes in there. It does. So your gauge goes into that little hole at the back there and what you do with it is once you've done your first line of stitching, let's say that this is your line of stitching that you've done and let's say you want to be that far apart, so your needle would be coming here, you would then put that guide on that line and you would then push the paper through, as you're, assuming that was your fabric, and you would stitch a new line in a perfectly um, parallel line to that. And when you're doing it, you're actually not watching where your needle is, you'll be watching where your guide plate is, on, where your guide line is on that. So that's the first guide, um, the guide that you have. Then you have a second guide as well, so there's two guides that you get and you push that in a little bit. You just gotta put a little bit of pressure on to get this through. Do not break it, and just use your thumb if needs be, and pull that down ever so slightly to get the guide through, and it will go through just ever so gently, don't push it. Hmm? Oh, I've just, that is just, sorry, I've just realized, Joe has just told me now that if you push it in like that, that works a lot easier. You've just changed my life, Joe. Sorry, I've always been thrusting in the side. And if you just pop it on there, it slots in there. Genius, thank you, Joe. There we go. So you've got these guides as well, and the walking foot. And I did get these, everything that is in the pack, into the box earlier. And hopefully I'll be able to do the same again now. Because everything does fit beautifully in here. I think I had that one under there. No, I didn't. That one's a little bit of a wave. But the one thing that most people don't know is you've got two types of darning feet. Um, this is your normal, uh, this one is your darning foot and it's called a PDH. That's your darning foot. So it's one piece, it doesn't change. Everything is exactly as it says on the tin. That's your darning foot, problem solved. But now you have this additional one as well, which is your convertible free motion quilting foot. How many of you have got these in your kit and you've no idea what they are? No clue how to use them? Well, let me show you. In your kit, you're gonna have a little screwdriver and on this foot, I'm gonna ask Joe to go on, on the, zoo, on the um, overhead and the zoom. He likes the zoom. You can see over here, you've got a screw. What you do then is you undo the screw, just ever so slightly, don't put them on too tight because you don't want to damage your feet. You take that off, now don't lose that, okay? Pop that somewhere safe. And you've got your QBS foot with nothing on it. So this is your convertible foot. So most of us have these and never know what they are, so I'm gonna show you. You pop that on there where you can see that the holes align and then this little bit here, this bar, has to be attached to that. You then hold that in there, and you take your screw. Oh, just make sure you don't cross this, the, the threads. There you go, so you can see. And I just then tighten that by hand. And when I've tightened that as tight as I can go, don't go too tight because you don't want to damage the feet. You then just take your screwdriver and I just rotate it one. I don't know if you saw that. I just literally went, not even a, a rotation. It was about, about but what would you call that? Maybe a tenth or a twelfth of a rotation there. And there you can see that's now an open toe. Let me double check. That one's the open toe foot. So if you're doing free motion embroidery, you can uh, the free motion quality, you can see that's your open toe foot. So you'll be able to see where you are on that one. So that's your open toe. Don't lose the screw. Make sure you put it somewhere you can find it. Then we've got this one, which is the Closed toe, this would be pretty simple. You can tell then that's the closed toe there. Again, you would just then attach that in there. Rotate that by hand. Tighten it up. Tiny, you can just see a tiny little bit of rotation there. And then that's ready. And then we've got our last one here, which is the clear view foot, which has also got a bit of a cross hatch on it. Um, and this is now a plastic one, which I had on originally. Only reason being is that I think it's easier to hold the biggest portion 
on the, on the um, convertible free motion foot because it's just that way if I am going to have to store it somewhere else I'd rather have the biggest bits, less things to lose. And again just rotate that by hand. Oh! Come on. I'm doing really well today. There we go. Come on. Right, that's not going to happen. Don't know why I can't get that one on. Oh, there we go. Because I hadn't lined the screw up properly. And there we go. And again, you just rotate that ever so slightly to make sure that that's got a little bit more tension on it. But don't over tighten them because we don't want to damage them. So there we go. That's your cross hatch um, convertible free motion foot. Doesn't that look impressive? It's like a target for your fabric. And then that you would attach as you would your uh, walking foot, but you wouldn't attach the, the army bit over your up and down. I know you know what that means because I didn't quite know how to wear that. So there we go. And then you've got all these lovely little feet on the bottom here, which is to stabilize the bottom of your machine, just to make sure you've got some little bit extra support. Um, if you've got specialist threads, these are your tops for your specialist threads. And then you get a couple of extra bobbins in there as well. Now, so if you are interested in getting this machine, it's just important to remind you that this doesn't come from us. This comes directly from Elna. And you don't have to pay any extra PNP. This is the one day PNP. So if you bought the machine today, you'd only pay the $3.95 delivery. Elna would send that through to you in the next couple of days. Um, obviously, get looking at the deliveries with the current climate, we're gonna do the best we can. Um, and that will come direct from Elna, but you only pay the one PNP. So if you bought anything else through us throughout the day, you've effectively got free PNP. So premium deliveries don't apply to this machine because they're coming obviously directly from Elna. So now we've done all of that. We've got everything on here. We then just slide that back in. Now the only two things I couldn't get back in, this foot didn't fit back in and I didn't find a way of getting that in, but I'm pretty sure if you maneuver everything around. But what I love, everything bar these two pieces, is inside the machine and it's kept. So you've only got two pieces that you need to put somewhere nice and safe so you don't know where so you know where they've all gone. And then you've got the lovely machine. Now on the top over here, I turned this around too early. On the top over here, it's going to show you all the fantastic stitches that are available to you. And you've got your lovely little stylus over here which I'm going to use to point. When you've got your straight stitch plate on, um, you've got this section of red stitches over here, which will tell you what it is that you need, you can and can't stitch. Um, and that's because, obviously, your straight stitch plate, you've got the, the tiny little hole where your needle is going to be going through, which is that little hole over there, or that one, or that one. It can't do the decorative stitching all the way along. This is the hole that it would normally be going through, so your straight stitch would go through there and you've got your usual feed dogs that would apply there. So all the stitches you can do on your straight stitch plate are over here. Oh, doing this at an angle is not an easy job. There we go. So your normal straight stitch plate is over here. Then you've got mode one, which is your usual stitches that most of us would use. You've got mode two over here, which is slightly more decorative stitching on that. Then you've got mode three, which is an alphabet. Mode four, which is a slightly different alphabet. Mode 5, which is, I think, a Greek alphabet. I'm not quite sure. Forgive me if I got that incorrect. But there's another alphabet there. And then Mode 6, it looks like it's a much more bold alphabet over here, all in capitals. So it's nice that you've got all the stitching on here, because then all you need to do is you need to just press, there's a big button on the screen that says Mode, which is really simple, nice and easy, nice and simple. Can't get it wrong. You just press Mode. And that will then adjust you from mode to one, two, three, four, five, and six. And when you press the mode, there is a tab down the side of the machine which shows you which mode you're on. So you can see there's mode. So you press mode, you've got mode four, mode five, mode six, mode one, mode two, whoop, mode three, back to mode four. Sorry, but and then you just see you keep going there and that's just the nice way of being able to do it And it will show you then which foot to use. So if we're doing mode one, you need an A foot You can see the A there If you're doing mode two, you need an F foot and then your F foot is stored just there 
So that's what I love about that, is you're able to then say, there's my F foot there. If you need an A foot, that's in there as well. If you're doing three, it's an F foot. Four, it's an F foot. Five, it's an F foot. Six, it's an F foot. But then with that, as far as I understand, you would also be able to use your F two foot, which is exactly the same, just with an open toe. So that's entirely up to you which one you'd prefer to use. I'm going to stick with what the machine says and go with my F foot. And we take the F foot, and put that on. And then to attach the feet, the simplest process in the entire world. Uh, this one's got no foot on it at all. I line the little silver bar up with the little hole um, which is in your ankle of your, I think it's called an ankle. So you can see if I rotate that there, you can see there's a tiny little divot at the bottom of that. There you can see my, there's a little divot. And all I do then is I lower my foot. Sorry, I've got my hand in the way. I lower my foot until it's grabbed that little metal bit and that didn't quite grab it because it wasn't quite lined up. There we go. So you can see it's now grabbed it and it's done. That's how simple it is. And if you want to get the foot off, there's a little black button at the back. It drops off. And then if you want to attach it on again, you just you, you need to unfortunately use your little finger in front of it or to the side. You line that up. You can see it just captured on and it's ready. So that's the really simple, easy way of being able to pop the feet on. Really nice and easy on that. We've also got the, and the um, automatic threader on here. The machine's already threaded, so I'm not going to do that now. You just then push that down. You, you thread your machine as normal, and then you take before you, obviously this isn't, oh, I can unthread it. Let's just do that. So you put that through there, and then I've popped, you can see over here, I pop my thread into that metal bit over there and then I've put it above number seven there and then watch this not work backwards now wait so fingers crossed fingers crossed ah oh, and it did perfect so there you go you can see it just slots it just slots nicely in there pull that through and your machine is your machine is now nice and threaded and that's how simple it is to use that pro that bit even if you're doing it upside down back to front and on live telly so it's really nice and easy to do this over the side of the machine over here, you've also got your automatic cutter, which most of us really love. You've got your needle up and down function. You've got your locking stitch function and your reverse stitch function, which is just really lovely that you've got these on a standard um, button press system. So that's your cutting thread, a cutting button. So you would just do that. My foot's obviously down at the moment, so that. I haven't got any fabric or done any of these stitches. So that would be an automatic cutter. This one pops your needle up and down. So if I now do that, if you look at your screen just there, you'll be able to see my needle's gone up, my needle's gone down. Sorry, needles, you saw what I mean. And then you've got your locking stitch there, which would then to just do two or three stitches to be able to lock your pieces of fabric together. And then you've got your reverse stitching um, button over there, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So we can do that now and I can show you exactly how that all works as well. So now you can say, oh, and then you've got your fast up and down button as well. So obviously your little turtle is your slowest, your hair is your fastest, and I'm going to go somewhere in the middle. So you can just see that's the lovely features of it. Now you know exactly what you're getting. Um, again, that fantastic warranty coming from Elner itself. Uh, five year warranty on that. Included in the price, you're getting your free motion, uh, your free motion, convertible free motion foot. You're getting your darning foot, you're getting your walking foot. Those in themselves usually are having to pay 59, 50, 49, £59 pounds for each, so that's included in the machine as well, as well as the five-year warranty, so that's a really great saving on it as well. Product comes direct from Janome. You're paying your $3.95 one-day P&P as standard, so if you bought the machine, you can then purchase with free postage for the rest of the day on any other product. So now let me show you those first two little stitches that I was talking about then. So we're going to pop that there. I'm just going to keep my... It's telling me to change to an A foot. So I'm just going to do as the machine tells me to, changing to an A foot. So I don't know if you saw that, my, I press that up and it gives me that little bit of extra height as well. So most people don't know that if, they, if you, your, your normal lever up and down takes you to that point, but you can press it even more and get extra height on it. And all I do is I just hold that ever so slightly to line it up. The foot's engaged and there we go. Easy, quick and painless. 
So now we're going to do put the leave the foot down. I'm going to do a locking stitch just to show you what that means. And all it does is it does three or four stitches in the same place, or maybe it's five, uh, in the same place on the spot, just to be able to lock your fabric together. Then I'm going to do a couple of normal straight stitches, and you can see I'm not even holding the fabric. The feed dog system holds it all. I'm going to do another locking stitch there. And that's now left there, and then I'm pressing my, um, my automatic thread cutter. And it's all done. So your threads are completely cut. You can see it's a really lovely, nice line of, of stitching there. Really, really good. Then we've got our decorative stitching. I'm going to try that and show you so you've got your different modes. Um, I use the alphabet um, and I wrote down a lovely little fun message for you, which says, read the manual. It really helps because it always does. And when you've done your decorative stitching on your embroidery machine for the, um, the alphabet, what you'll need to do, just realized I've put my unpicker in there. Boom, boom. It's always the way, the bit you need is always at the bottom. And I'm not gonna try and do Tetris to get that all back in. So when you've done your normal, um, and I'll show you how to do this now, once you've done it, you'll need to unpick the threads between it. So you'll see between the A and the D, you just need to unpick that tiny little thread there between the E and the A and between the R and the E. And then once you've unpicked those little tiny threads, you just go through and you snip these extra threads off because you've got locking stitches at the beginning of each letter and at the end of each letter and it just makes it a little bit clearer and a little bit easier to read um, what you're doing and what's, what you've tried to say when you haven't got those lines in between them. So you can see the T there, that's where I've left a stitch to be able to show you what it is that's going to come out. So you, all you do is you unpick that and pull that to one side and you trim it off and it just gives you the full alphabet then. And you just go through and then you, you just pull off all the bits and things where it's joined. And that's just a really sweet little feature of the um, alphabet system on that. I'm now going to do a couple of decorative stitches. So I'm changing my foot from the A foot onto an F foot. Um, and then just lowering that down and doing it. So my decorative stitches I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to do, let's do some mode two. So as I showed you earlier how to change the mode, I'm just moving to mode two. Um, I'm going to use this little piece of fabric. And all I do now is I type in the numbers of the stitches that I want. So the first one I'm going to do is zero 05. And because I want to do a sequence, there's an option on this machine. What you do is you press zero 05, which is just, you can, you can go from zero 01 up to 85. And you can just do a whole series of them. So I'm going to do number five and I press memory. Then I'm going to press 85 and press memory. And then I'm going to press 84 and press memory. And one more I'm going to do, let's do number 65 and press memory. And then you've pressed memory, that's it. So all you do now is you put your foot down and you're ready to go. And again, you can see I'm not holding it. I'm not guiding the fabric in any way. It's going through the machine nice and safely. And it will show you then each stitch is so automatically um, done and in, in sequence. But then I'm going to show you a really cute feature of that as well. So this is our last stitch on this memory run. It's got a little snowflake on it. So I've done that. Now I'm not going to break my thread. All I'm going to do, there's a button on here which has got a little circle on it. Um, let me rotate this so I can show you. I'll just move this around so we can get the... There's a little button over here, which is like a half moon and half black and half white. That's your mirroring function. So what I've done is I've stitched out a series of, fug, of um, stitches there. Sorry, I've got a bit of a glare, there we go. So this is the button I'm talking about. So all I'm doing, so what I did previously is I typed in the numbers and I pressed memory. Typed in the number, press memory. Typed in the number, press memory. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press that one. Oh, it's telling me I can't do it. Why not? To clear it, you then press C. So I'm gonna do that again. 
you're going to do, uh, what did we do? It was 65, memory, 85. Perfect, and then what I do now is all I do is I've typed all of those in and I just pop my foot down and then that readily goes through the whole process again. But the great thing with this is you can see the quality of the stitching is fantastic. So all you do now is you press your own threader, your, your automatic thread cutter, you lift your foot up and you bring it out. And I'm going to show you this on the overhead, just how clear the stitching on this machine is. So that was my first um, stitch there, which was the stipple stitch, lovely pair of scissors, a bit of a thread, and then we've got our lovely Snowflake, another snowflake, and then these are the two random stitches that I did earlier. Now, like when you're dealing with the, um, nope, that's there. So you can just see all the lovely decorative stitches on that, and you can see they really stitch out very, very clearly and very well. And you can see with the alphabet, that works really nicely. So if you wanted to do like an alphabet and then put a, a row of all your different sewing stitches on there, you could easily do that. And that's just the, the basic tiny little overview of this incredible machine. What I would suggest that you did is when going through this machine, pick up your manual. It's a fantastic manual. Go through each and every page, just read it, understand exactly what each one does, what each, each thing does, and each foot does, explore the feet, explore the buttonholes, try everything out, and then I can see here there's a whole section on applique and work out how you do your applique on the machine, and just play with it. It's a really lovely bit of fun to be able to do. Great deal with us today, the Ex Excellence 680 Plus Elna, five-year warranty delivered to you straight from Elna, um, in Stockton on Tees. Premium delivery, unfortunately, does not apply on this product. And we will get it to you as soon as we can, because obviously where we are at the moment, everybody's doing their level best to make sure everything's delivered as quickly and as promptly as possible. So I'm just gonna flick back now to our lovely early birds with our lovely panels, finding a little spot for those. Got our fantastic little early panel here. I'm gonna keep that, because I might need it later. We're doing our fabric strips design roll race today um, so this is at 10 o'clock but if you wanted to try afterwards look at these they've got a really lovely combination of these lovely little fun product there with the lovely little flowers you can see all the gradation of colors there going from the, going from the blue all through to the red and then I'll slide it the other way and you can see the other side there are 16 strips on this and if you did want to do the design roll in this um, uh, fabric, you'd need to get at least two of them, two or three of them, to get a really good size quilt on it. Just doing the one, unfortunately, wouldn't give you a really great size quilt on it. But you can see it's 55 inches wide, 16 pieces at two and a half, and it's a really lovely colorway. Great design on the fabrics, that. And exclusive to Sewing Street. Won't get those anywhere else. I'm loving this. Get to play with lovely fabrics and a machine. What could go wrong? So anybody who's looking to take part in our design role race later, we're wanting this to be a nice sense of community, everybody being involved, you being able to share your, what your experience is on it. Please make sure you're popping pictures onto our Facebook um, page. We've got our main Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com slash sewing street. Otherwise we've got our fans page as well. But if we could put them all in one place, that would be fantastic. And if we could pop them onto the sewing street TV page, that would be amazing. We do have people following our Instagram page as well. So that is in, on Instagram, it's at Sewing Street. Any of the shows that you're watching with us as well, you can catch up on our YouTube channel, which is if you search Sewing Street, you'll be able to find us all on, on there as well. And all the videos that we've done since Valentine's Day, you'll be able to catch on there. So now let's go on to the various other bits and bobs that I've got for you today. So the first thing I'm going to show you today is this lovely mat. So what this is, when we're using our sewing machines, they, they're a little bit noisy sometimes. This machine's quite quiet, but they are, they do get a bit noisy, but they're also, they do, I find they move a little bit. This is a lovely little mat. Oops, I've just stood on something there. 
Um, this is a lovely little mat by So Easy, um, and all it does is it just makes it stabilizes your machine, gives it a nice extra little bit of grip, and it softens the sound of it as well. And this is now available today. It's 40 centimeters by 60 centimeters, and it's $15.99. You can see it's a nice thick rubber. It's not going to move. Your, your mat is very safe on that. Um, sorry, your machine is very safe on that. The mat's not going to move. The machine's not going to move on the mat. And it's just a really lovely little bit of uh, kit that, which I have to say, I think I'm going to be adding to mine. Because it's also, you know when you're using a machine, sometimes you get those little black dots on your table as well. It's nice to be able to have this that it would stop that happening. Because those little black dots are happening when there's vibrations and you're using a machine a lot. So this thing just stops all of that. So it doesn't mark your table. This is a nice little product, that. And now, staying with the Elna Janome brand, we have got this very sweet little carrier bag. This is for your sewing machines, uh, but I've not seen these before because what this does is you actually load your machine from the sides. So you then plop your ma machine in this way. Um, I don't know what size this is or what machine it holds, but it looks quite wide. Actually, I have a little tape measure here, so I can measure that. So the internal, um, there's a little bit of a curve there, so I'll measure from there. So internally, you're looking at about eight inches by 16 by, let's call that 12. So eight by 16 by 12, which is a nice size. I don't think it would fit that. Oh, it would. No, it wouldn't. It's a little bit tall, but it's a really nice size of bag, but most sewing machines would go in. This Elna, it's the Elna 680 is a really good big throat. It's got a lovely big uh, machine there. So this is a mid-size machine, but I reckon most of the smaller machines would go in here. Mine certainly would, because I've only got a little one. And that's a lovely little branded bag there. It's £44.99 with Janome today. And it's just a really cute little bag and it's very very firm so you can see it's got a nice little feel to that and it's got a, a shoulder strap can't go wrong with a shoulder strap and goes up for there so you can see it's really quite a nice thing pop in your bag pop the machine in there we go that's a very pretty color on that as well I'm going to leave that just over here. Start again. So we've now got these fantastic plastic bobbins. I have got hundreds of these because I like doing fewer steps in my uh, sewing process. And what I do then is I go and I pick up loads of these, put different color bobbins on them and fill up all my different threads. And I have hundreds of them in little boxes all the way. These are available today with us and they are eight pounds for 10. So that's a really good price on those. Um, there you go, can't go wrong with any of those. And I think these work with all, uh, these are for all Janome home use models. Um, so most 90% of the machines, it's obviously not for the industrial machines um, and the ones that take metal bobbins. Uh, but that is a really nice, good. that's a really good price on that. Janome, 10 bobbins, can't go wrong with that. And I'm gonna just light, there we go. There we go. So you've got 10 bobbins for eight pounds. And the one thing to just remember with bobbins is we've all done it. We've gone on to other websites and we've paid a pound for a hundred bobbins. And they are not normally very good and they are actually potentially going to damage your machine as well. And the needle going through, it's not a great idea. Make sure that you do use that, what machine you have, make sure you're using the affiliated uh, approved bobbins with it because you don't want to cause any damage to your machine. So many of you have seen me using this extra large cutting mat. I use it all the time. Really, really great size. Um, this one is 34 inches by 22. Um, you've got both the Imperial and the metric. This is the Imperial side that way, and you can see the inches on that. And then when I flip it round, I'm gonna do it that way. You've got your metric on that, which has got all your centimeters on it. Um, on this, you can see you've got all your different lines for your angles. Um, you can see all your different lines, the angles, and you've got them on both sides of the board as well, which is great. So it would work for left and right handed people. Um, and then on the imperial side as well, you've got exactly the same thing with your angles as well. Really little lovely piece of kit that, and no home should be without one. 
And you always, for me, I think you, because I went and I bought the really cheap and cheerful ones. They didn't last very long and it was quite a small size. And I think it's just better to get something we know is going to last you a long time. And it's got a bigger size because the bigger the piece of um, rotary cutting board, the less you have to move fabric. And you just move your, like I use my fiskers, I just slide it along there and then you can cut out a lot more on it. So I think that's a really great deal because I know when I'm doing binding, um, I'm, I can get 12 pieces for 13 pieces of binding out of, the, out of my mat very easily. Whereas on a small board, you're then moving things along, you're getting maybe at six and then moving things along. It just, it's that little bit of extra time that you save on it, which I think is fantastic. So we've now got, as I had this on yesterday, it is my favorite bit of kit, I have to say, because what I love is this fabric, this, this device. So anybody who's got dexterity issues or any issues with regards to pressing or find things very difficult and you're cutting a lot, the rotary cutter movement, it can be very strenuous on your hands. It can be quite difficult, but this one is so, so easy to use. You literally just use one finger, you push it down, and you go from there. This is a brand called Fiskars. 90% of us would know who Fiskars are. They're a fantastic company in Finland. Um, been going for many, many, many years. I think it was 145 years. They've got Royal Warrants. Um, I think they own Royal Dalton, um, uh, Royal Albert and things like that. So it's a really great company. They've got loads of different brands. But what, they, what they've mainly been doing to be able to stay along for so many years, stay around, stay around for so many years, is they've always stayed to be in, keeping up with initiatives and keeping up with technology. And what they've done here is certainly done that because they've taken a paper guillotine, really, and converted it to be a rotary cutter for fabric. And it is so simple to use. You can see I'm putting no pressure on it at all. And I'm just going through and I'm cutting it. And it's just so, so simple. And it just cuts off very, very simply. And it's very clean. And it's really easy to change the blade. Um, you just then turn the unscrew it here the blade then you pull this bit off and take the blade out and change it um, it's just a really lovely product and I literally have used mine I must have cut 10 to 20 thousand pieces of fabric on mine it's still going strong the only issue I have with it is I dropped it on the floor over here and I've cracked my handle but it still works absolutely fine and it still hangs up on its little hook in my studio so it is I want to say indestructible but obviously that's not true but it's it works really really well and it's a product that I know that I use all the time and it's something that I think most people would really enjoy. But I'm just going to do one last one. I wonder how many layers I could get through with this. Hang on. So that's five layers now. I'm going to do six layers here. See, didn't even hesitate. And I got six. Do you think I can get 12? I think 12 is pushing my luck. It is. That's not, I can tell it's not safe to do that because it's not even flat on the thing. But you can easily get six, six to eight pieces on that absolutely easily. Really, really lovely product that you'll enjoy it. And of course, we've got our fabulous prim iron, which we use all the time. Um, I have not plugged this in yet, so it is going to have to warm up. Bear with 30 seconds. So the prim iron here, it's a really cute little iron. What you've got here, when you take it with you, you can see the size on it is really good. Um, you can pop it in your bag. You've got a little filling of water well here so you can get steam. You put the water in that as well. Um, you can leave it plugged in all day because it's got an on off feature here. Um, so that's on maximum. And then you rotate that around and you've then got that on your minimum. You've got the little light on here, which will tell you when it's on and off. Um, and you can then see the level of water. If you've overfilled it with the maximum, it will leak out. Um, and you've got a little steam function there. So if you want steam, you push it there. If you don't want steam, you push it in. And you can see when it folds up, you've got this lovely little feature that you can wind it around there. Because if you just want to take up a tiny bit of space. And it comes with a little bag and a little jug to fill with water. So it just packs up really, really nice and simply and taking it into your 
sewing days or just days out because it's also nice you don't have to get up all the time then because I like less steps in my process so for me I'd have my little iron my little board right next to my cutting bits I put a little I do my little triangle I've got my sewing machine in the middle my iron on that side and my cutting on that side and I just swivel all day around through the whole thing so this is really great because it's not a huge iron because a lot of the time when you're doing it you don't need a really big iron really really nice And these prim irons, oh, we've just heard now, once we've sold out of these, we're not actually able to get them again. Gosh, that's sad. So a really great product, that $39.99. Um, and I, I can't live without mine. So I'm hoping everybody is now ready for your design roll race at 10 o'clock. Really excited about it. And I'm hoping you've got all your pictures loaded up onto our social media. Our Facebook page is Sewing Street TV. And the, um, we're hoping that all your progress pictures and colors that you've chosen um, will be on there and you'll be able to then share what you're doing and share the experience with everybody because that's what we want it to be is a nice social thing that you're able to do with everybody. And everybody's able to see then and what you, how far along you've got. And if you've got any questions, pop them onto a message to us on the Facebook page as well and we can answer them while we're in, in the studio. Any questions about the products that we've got on today, that'd be great. One little thing I'm just going to remind you about with the um, previous product that we had, keep your box because when you're traveling and you're using your um, taking this with you, if that gets pressed down, your blade is exposed. So I always travel with my little box. So I then just keep, when I'm going to a, a day or anything, I just pop it straight into the box and then it makes sure that everything is nice and safe when you're traveling with it. So we're going to have a little break now to rechange the set um, and then we'll be back in a few minutes. We've got some fabulous pre-cut fabrics available for you and we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you so much for your time. Bye bye. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to show you what we need to get ready for our sew along on the 18th of April. You're going to see a hyperlapse video of me doing really, really quick work on how to make this wonderful quilt to get you ready if you'd like to sew along with us and what you need to do. So the first thing you're going to do, either using a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter, whichever you feel more comfortable with, you're going to separate all 48 of your different strips being the uh, sunrise, sunset, the azure and the berry, break those all up and keep them in order from dark to light in each colorway. In the way that I did the quilt for the show, I had dark berry to light berry and then I decided to go light blue to dark blue and then the dark sunset to the light sunset. So now you would have taken your design rolls and you would have cut them all into these amazing strips that go from light to dark. I piled them up in half going from light to dark as I cut them off the roll. So I have the, the berry one, uh, no, this is the sunset one. I have the azure and I have the berry one. That's the sunset, the azure and the berry one. So what I'm doing now is I've decided that these ones are quite close together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these ones from light to dark, but I'm gonna turn these round and do dark to light. So what I'm going to join do is take one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, then one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, and just go in order and sew them all together. So these are when I say sew them together, these are going to be the short ends here. So that will be sewn together to one of these. This will be sewn to one of those. Those will be one of the on the short end. Once you've separated your blocks and you've decided that you're going to now stitch these all together, you're going to take the short ends of your strips and you're going to sew those together. The way I decided to do it was I went from orange, blue, berry and I kept that order going so you had a dark orange, light blue, dark berry and decreasing all the way around until you had a light orange, dark blue, light berry. Once you've now sewn your short ends together and you have a 1700 odd inch piece of fabric, you're going to take one side and you're going to cut 20 to 30 inches off one side of this fabric long strip. Reason being is that if you don't, you're not going to have any movement of the fabric throughout the quilt and it will just be the same as sewing the whole grid together and that isn't going to be what we need. Once you've done that, you're going to take the two raw edges of your fabric, which aren't sewn together, put them right sides together and you're going to sew along one side of the fabric. Fabric. So after you've done all of that, you're going to come to the end and there will always be a kink, a curve, a wobble, don't worry. 
literally fold in half as close as you can get it to half and cut it. I know everybody just freaked out a little bit, but I promise you it doesn't matter. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to sew this off to get to the very end. You just fold those to the edge there and you sew to the end. At this point, you're now going to take your rotary cutter and your ruler and you're going to square the edge of your, of your um, pieces off. This is how far you'll need to get to be able to join me in the sew along and sew along with me on the 18th at about 9, 9.30. So please, any questions, drop me a line on social media and thank you so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the 18th. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, I'm John Cole Morgan and welcome to Sewing Street. We've got our design roll race ready. This is what I made on mine. You can see all the different amazing colours. Um, everybody who makes theirs will come out totally different, which I'm really, really excited about. But I'm also very excited to show you our new website. Well, not new, we've just had a couple of adjustments on it. So what we've done is, as usual, you'll type in Sewing Street TV. No, you're not sewingstreet.com um, and that'll come up then with our, our, our page and on the page you'll see the first little bit will be either myself, Vix or Debs um, doing our little bit of things. Gosh I look awful in that photo there. Oh sorry I don't realise why that was coming up now. I thought I had cleared all of that. Apologies. Go away, I know. So we've then got our screen where we're then on the uh, the page and then you've got all of our products underneath here so before what we were doing is we were telling you that you could change the product page the number of products per page down to 96 but now we've made it even easier for you if I can find my mouse so over here you're gonna have an option which says shop our catalog and if you click if you click onto that my computer's thinking having a bit of a go slow. So then what you've got is you've got all the books, the patterns, fabric patterns, uh, panels, the pattern fabrics, the plain fabrics, the machines and overlockers. So if you wanted to look up our lovely little Elna machine that we had previously, uh, that we showed on to the previous um, hour, you'll be able to see, is that the 680? Oh, it's simply because I didn't rotate it, push it down more. So you've got all the, all the, everything that relates to a sewing machine, you'll be able to then find there. So you've got your sewing circular device, the concealed zip, uh, zip of foot, the bag, you've got the 780, um, you've got the Atelier 9. Gosh, I hadn't even known we had half of these. So all the machines and everything that we've got available, you'll be able to find on here. And then at the bottom there, you can see that's the 680 that I was demoing last hour. So it's a great, great um, website ad adaption there, being able to find it by catalogue. So do make sure you check that out. It's a really nice way to be able to find everything that you're looking for on the website. So at 
any stage you want to watch anything that we've got on the show or want to watch something that we've had previously, our YouTube channel uploads all of our live shows from the morning, later on in the afternoon. It takes a couple of hours to get everything uploaded, but by about three, four o'clock in the afternoon, it's always up um, of that day. So you'll be able to watch every single show that we've ever done, going back to Valentine's Day on our YouTube uh, page channel. YouTube channel? Is it a page? YouTube channel. Um, and that is Sewing Street. If you just um, search Sewing Street on YouTube, you'll find all the videos on there as well. So anything that you may have missed or later want us to watch back later, they're all available on there. And I'm really hoping everybody is ready for the design wall race at 10 o'clock. I'm hoping they're all going to be ready and everything's cut out and ready to go. You'll see between our shows it's got a little video of what you need to be doing to get ready. And if you're not there yet, don't worry, you can watch it back on YouTube. On our uh, Facebook page, which was on a few seconds ago, Sewing Street TV, if you're going to be posting any pictures of your progress or any pictures of anything of where you are or any questions, pop them on there and we'll be able to answer them as much as we can and as quickly as we can. Um, and yeah, really, really looking forward to that. So that'll be up at 10 o'clock on the hour. So most people who are doing our design roll race has, have already purchased these fantastic uh, geometric um, panels that we do, all exclusive to Sewing Street. Um, I'm going to show you one in one colour here. And what you get is you get this fantastic gradation of colour going from a, a dark all the way through to a light. And you've got these really intricate designs on each of the fabrics that are repeated. So whether you're getting this one, which is the sunset, or you're getting the berry, or you're getting the azure, you are getting the same patterns on whether it is a light or a dark fabric. So you, uh, sorry, by that I mean you can see this middle line here is the same on the blue the design that you're getting on that. So that's what I mean on that. And it's each one of those at that level in the panel will have that pattern. So it's a really lovely way to be able to have cohesion between your fabrics, which is why that I was so pleased that we could do this bundle for the design roll race in, uh, in these colorways. This bundle, you're getting the sunset one. Uh, you're getting the berry colorway. Get this gorgeous berry. Yeah. Gorgeous berry as well, so you can see it goes all the way from dark to light, and you can see all the geometric panels on uh, ge geometric designs on there are the same as what we had on the previous panel, um, just in a different colorway, which I think is a really, really clever way of doing it. And then we've got this beautiful blue as well. We all know I love my blues, and you can see that is just a lovely way of doing it. I think the the designs show a little better on the blue, but you've got the same design on each of those colorways. Um, so where you've got the lightest one here, the lightest in the pink has got the same pattern on it. And this, this bundle that we've got today, you're going to be saving £10 being able to buy this bundle. And when you've made the quilt up, this one is, uh, I think it was roughly 68 by 78 inches um, rectangular. Um, and that's what three panels will get you. And you'll have 50, uh, 48 strips of 50, let's call it 54 inches wide with seam allowances. Um, and it's a really lovely way of doing it. But don't forget you need to cut that 20 inches off at the beginning, otherwise it won't work. And you can save £10 by buying this as a bundle rather than buying them individually. And we all like saving a bit of money. Love it. And it's just such gorgeous colours as well. And you're taking part in a fantastic experience. But if you didn't want to perhaps to do those, maybe you wanted to do these in these fabulous barley pops. Um, I've got these in the wrong order. Actually, I'm going to do that right. Sorry, I did that in the wrong order there. We're going to do these fabulous, because um, we do so many fantastic uh, fabric strips. Um, I was really excited because we're going to be able to put another bundle together. If you don't like these colorways, you can be able to do these in different colorways. Look at this bundle there. This is called the Copen Design Roll. Is it the Copen Summer? Yes, Copen Summer. This one's called Copen Summer, and you can see it just feels so, so summery. And you can see all these gorgeous colours. So that would be the first, um, the first one in this collection. Let me just show you how wide it is as well, so you can see and just get an idea of scale of how big they are. These are how big our panels are. You can see they're huge, 55 inches long. They're 16 different strips, and they're two and a half inches per strip. So that is working out at, I can't remember how long it is, but it's just over a metre ten um, for the width. It is 16, isn't it? Yes. 
So you get this colorway here, and I'm gonna hang these off the side just so that you can just see how beautifully well these colorways go together. And then we've got our paisley marmalade combination as well. So you can see this gorgeous paisley marmalade colorway as well, and I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> I will learn this one day. A really lovely color combination here. But you see, the great thing about these products is they're so universal. You don't have to use them for our design roll race. You can use them just for binding if you like. But what I wanted to show you here by putting them on the screen is look how well those go together. And then on top of that, before I show you what this looks like, don't these just flow so beautifully together? There's nothing jumping out at you and being obviously wrong. The colors work so well together, and it's just a nice different way of being able to do the design roll race if you wanted to, just in a different colorway. And don't worry, if you haven't got everything ready for the design roll race, you can still purchase the product and do it at a later date. Because we've got our fabulous YouTube channel, you'll be able to follow on as to what we were doing and how we did it and then be able to send pictures in later on, because I'm hoping what will happen is people will buy products like this and be able to share with us how you've done it. We run a Make of the Week um, program every week on our fans page as well, so we're always looking at whatever you're making to be able to pick our Make of the Week. So everything you upload on social media, we do see. So if you can't take part today or you haven't gotten all your bits ready, don't worry, you can load them up and in a week or so you may be Pick of the Week. You never know. But I do think this bundle is a really nice combination, really lovely way of getting the fabrics to work together. They don't jump out, they, they're very cohesive, and you're saving again £10 on this bundle, and it's £49.97, which is a really, really great price, and you'll also make a quilt of 68 by 78 inches if you follow the design roll race the way we go. But just remember to cut that 20 inches off at the beginning. It might be 64 by 60, 78, sorry, I might have got my math wrong there. But anyway, I'll get a tape measure out in a bit if needs be. But it's around about that size. Either way, you can see it's a really good size quilt, whatever size it worked out to. 64 or 68 by 78, it's a really good size. So now you can tell, I'm always so excited by Barley Pops. I got very, I ran away with myself there. And I actually know that one person, Penny Robinson, is actually using the Barley Pops for her jelly roll, her design roll race today. So what we've got today, and I'm gonna show you these just very briefly in a, a, a loose combination, because any time I get to play with the Barley Pops, I'm a very happy person. So these Barley Pops, they are £39.99. You get 40 pieces. They are 42 inches, 43 inches, round about there, by two and a half inches. So just to compare them to our panels, our panels work out at 55 inches. Um, so price-wise, you can do your own comparison there. Um, so these are, 40 strips at 39.99 and this just gives you an idea of the different colors that you're getting in them and how well they go together as a block and a combination it's just the colors on this are just amazing so you can see you've got the yellow in that but you've also got yellow in the pink so they just cohesively go so well together these that one is our bright is this our rainbow this is our rainbow colorway the rainbow one and i'm going to do pastel next And this is our rainbow, this is our pastel one. Get that out of the way. This is our pastel one. I'm always struggling with the lights to show you the color. Just look how beautiful they are. Can't leave a barley pot behind me. And then you've got all of these amazing colors and you can just see how beautifully they go together. But here as well, you can see that actually shows quite well. You've got the green there. And then in the piece below, it's the green, but it's the same piece of fabric. But no two pieces will ever be the same because of the techniques that they use in making, bar uh, making batiks in Bali, that they leave them all out in the sun and where the water evaporates faster or slower or if it rains while it's doing it, it's just slightly different because it's all outside and done by hand. It's a fantastically amazing um, process. If you look up online on how they do it, it's really incredible. You can see the gorgeous teals on that, go matching the teals on there. Oh, I love these. So that's our pastel range. And then we've got our, my favorite one, of course, because it's got the, which one have we called this? Under the sea, got to be wrong there. What is it? Who was the under the sea in the Little Mermaid? Sebastian, Sebastian. So there we go, that's our under the, under the sea colorway, and you just see that pop so beautifully there. 
but even in my hand you can tell just how gorgeous these colours are together. And it's just the synergy on how they do it, I just love it. They're just beautiful, you just, oh, you just can't wait to sleep underneath them, you'd feel so at peace having that on top of you at night. So that's our under the sea combination there. These are all individually $3.99 for a pack of 40. $39, $3.99, gosh, I wish I'd buy the lot. Sorry, misspoke then. $39.99 for a pack of 40, two and a half inch strips. And I think they're working out at 40, oh, 44, 45 inches long. That will include salvages. So normally when you've got a finished size, it'll be about 43. So if, which one is it? Helps if I keep looking through. Um, now let's say you love, now pre-cuts. Let's talk about pre-cuts. Some of you are completely brand new to quilting and to any form of fabric. So forgive me all you people that do know about it. Um, I'm gonna be explaining something you already know. You're gonna come across the word pre-cuts in quilting or in the, in the fabric world. You're gonna come up with the word pre-cut. What is a pre-cut? So a pre-cut would be something like a this we're calling a barley pop. Uh, and a barley pop is strips of fabric, 42, whatever length, but they're two and a half inches wide. We do them as fabric strips, which we call design strips. Um, Moda would do them as a jelly roll. Um, so that would be a two and a half inch piece of fabric, width of fabric. So if your fabric like ours is 55, you're getting more for your money by buying the 55 inch one. But if you're buying something that's 44 inches or 45 inches, including salvages, um, that would be, the width of fabric on that. So most quilting fabrics are around 42 inches finished. I normally go with 40 because it just makes it easier, you get a bit of a bonus. So anything that's called a jelly roll, design roll or a barley pop is two and a half inches wide by width of fabric. So that's your first pre-cut and what it means by pre-cut is it comes pre-cut up or it comes on a panel like this that you would then cut it out to be able to make your two and a half inch strips yourselves. I have to say these are quite good because you've got no salvages on. But anyway, then you get something called a layer cake. Now a layer cake will come as a 10 inch square piece of fabric and you'd normally get about 40, 42 pieces in a 10 inch square pack and they come together literally plonked on top of each other and they look a bit like a cake. So that's where the term layer cake comes and that's by Moda and they're normally by uh, 10 inches square. Then you can get a five inch square which is called a charm pack. Um, we do our own five inch square bundles as well which would come on a panel. You'll be able to check our website out for that under our fabric panels. Um, that's a really nice one as well because a layer cake is quite good because you've got the 10 inch squares but sometimes that's a bit big for what you want to do. You want smaller pieces so you can then use a charm pack. Then you can also get a, I don't know what they're called, but you get little two and a half inch squares as well. But they come pre-cut or pre-cuttable in order for you to be able to have everything the same size. So that's your charm pack, your layer cake, the little baby one, which I'm sorry, I can't remember, the two and a half inches, and your jelly rolls. And then you get something called a fat quarter. So what a fat quarter is, you take half a meter of fabric with the fabric, you cut the half meter off, but where you've got the fabric, let's just pretend that's salvage, that's salvage, you fold it in half, that's your half meter, you're going to cut this piece off here. So this is your salvage here, this is your salvage here, you fold the salvages together and you cut over there. That piece that you've got left is called a fat quarter. So you'll see in our bundles that we sell, you've got four fat quarters on a page, which is basically a meter of fabric where you've got the four fat quarters. So that shows it really, really easily because you've got that, those lines that you can cut them off. So when you're buying a fat quarter, it's basically 25, uh, it's, it's half a meter, half of half a meter, because what you're doing is you're just getting a quarter of a meter of fabric. It's the same amount of fabric as if you cut 25 centimeters of fabric with the fabric, because, but it's just cut, ours is, uh, a fat quarter is cut as a, a bigger piece, whereas a, it's a skinnier piece then for a long, what we call a long quarter in your pre-cut definitions. Then you get your half meter and you get a fat eighth as well and a long eighth as well. So those are the 
the, what pre-cuts are, and you normally get them from your fabric stores, etc., or from ourselves, you'll be able to see that you get fat quarter bundles, or fat quarter panels, or charm packs, or design squares, or design rolls. You'll be able to buy those as a what we call a pre-cut. So what the reason that's important is with books like this, when people say make pre-cut quilts, what you, they're assuming you've done is, for example, this one over here, they would assume you'd have bought something like this, or something like what we sell on these, and you're then able to cut those up and it gives you ideas of how to actually use the pre-cuts um, in order to do these different projects. So this is by, who made this book? Rachel Griffith, a self-taught quilter who's become a quilt teacher, designer, blogger, book author, magazine contributor and has her own pattern line. Goodness me, Rachel's a busy girl. That's amazing. So that's one of the quilts that she's got there. Oh, this is quite good because, oh look at that, that's really fun. So what she's done here, I think she's combined charm squares. So as I said to you before, charm squares are five inch squares, so she's done those. And she's also put a jelly roll in, so you can see those are the two and a half strips behind. So she's used, um, oh and it, this is really good because it tells you if you're doing a wall hanging or a crib quilt, how much you need of each one going up to queen. And a queen quilt is 93 by 105. And that's a big quilt, that's a really big quilt. Um, try not to just take, oh, that's really good. And then she shows you how big it comes out. That's very clever. I like that. And the reason people mostly use pre-cuts is because, I hate the word, but we're a little bit lazy. We don't like cutting things up. I don't like the word lazy. I just, we like fewer steps. Um, and when it's already cut up for us, half the the, the pain of quilting is cutting everything up. So anybody who's going to make our lives easier by cutting everything up for us, take all my money. <laughs> and it gives you, because you also got the consistency then as well, to be able to have, you know that everything is completely and utterly um, cut up and accurately and everything's done. I've just realised, good old Rachel, I thought Rachel had written the whole book. It's not. This is by 10 different quilters uh, that have designed the book. So I apologise, the book is not written by Rachel Griffith. I gave her all the credit for all these other lovely people's work. But the good thing here is you can see this is a nice simple way. If you're a bit of a beginner and you're a bit scared about doing a quilt because you've got to match seams up, none of these are going to matter if you're a little bit out because if anybody gets that close to your quilt and they're going to criticise it well they shouldn't be under your quilt in the first place that's really cute I like these these wild webs by Mary Cohen they're really fun so it's a real oh, noughts and crosses we like a noughts and crosses so this is quite a cute little book using all the pre-cuts and things oh that's clever that's very clever You've got all these different ways of doing quilts and things. I love being able to see things like that. So this is a really, really sweet little book. This is £10.99 as a book. And anybody who's got any pre-cuts lying around, haven't got any idea of how to do it, it's almost the same price as one pattern. You might as well just get the book and you've got 10 patterns in there. Working out just over a pound per pattern. That is the Make uh, Pre-Cut Quilts book for £10.99. And don't forget, we've got our one day P&P all day. Um, so we are, you're able to purchase that uh, and not pay the postage twice. <gasps> liberty. I'm just going to stroke this quietly. You know how I love my liberty. So what I'll do here is I'll just uh, move these all out so you can get an idea of what you're getting in these. This is called the Liberty Teal Bundle, bundle by Winterbourne House Range. Oh my goodness, look at them. And I'm going to pick two or three to show you what they look like. And I'm going to do the top and the bottom one, just because they're easy. So this is that you're going to get 11 fat quarters on this range. Oh, look at that. Have I got it the right way around? I just love any, for, oh, it's just so beautifully done. Liberty have got this incredible, incredible design ethic that everything is just so gorgeous and so beautiful. Liberty have been around for... Uh, 145 years I think it was um, and they're just incredible if you've not been able to get to their store in Regent Street uh, Great Marlborough Street sorry make sure you get down there someday it's definitely a destination shop that one and then I'll take the top one on this look at this oh just so beautiful and effortless and all those colors they just zing off the page off the fabric to you Really, really lovely. So this is our Fat Quarter Bundle from the Winterbourne House range. This is our teal collection of colours. There are 11 in here, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is exclusive to Sewing Street. No, no other t um, channel has them in 11. Um, we, we've got them as an exclusive range to us.
can't go wrong with that. And that's what the bundle's gonna look like, if I can position that in some way that the camera can pick it up. Stand on my heels, there we go. That's quite good, actually, I'm extending my calves. That's a beautiful, beautiful range of fabric, that. That's our teal range from the Winterbourne collection. So this is Modern Quilting by Michael Caputo. If I've said your name wrong, Michael, I'm so, so sorry. This is, oh, I love Modern Quilting, but I always think Modern Quilting is one of those things that I'm not good enough for. I think it's always for the, all the other clever quilters in the world. But this is a really sweet book. This is available also $10.99. Um, Sorry, I'm gonna go from the back because it's just easier to flip. So you've got all these lovely templates as well. Love a good template. Just seeing all the other templates that we've got here. Oh, that's quite good. Then you can just, um, put these out afterwards as well. Oh, look at that, that hexagon. Gosh, that is modern. The love hex quilt, that's lovely. Bit worried Andrew saw that because then we'd have to be making it at home. Oh, these are lovely. Oh, the scary curves. That's lovely as well. Starlight quilt. I did. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is very cute. That's called the Orby quilt. Oh, I quite like that. Mm, I think and, uh, um, this book is definitely coming. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Sorry, I get very excited by my books, as you all know. That is really good. There's a lot of points to match there. Oh, no, they're not. Oh, there are. You've got to line all those bits up there. So that's one of those ones where I might not have a gin and tonic while I'm doing it. Oh, that's pretty as well. There's some gorgeous quilts in here. Oh, and they've got bags as well. Oh, I love that. Oh, my goodness. That's an ironing mat and a sewing machine cover. Right, take all my money, that is gorgeous. Oh, and they've used Juicy Juice. Juicy Juice is a design, uh, a designer, a fabric designer for Andover. Incredible fabrics. Gosh, this is a fabulous book. Right, my new favorite book in the quilting world. Michael, amazing, love it, fabulous book. You can see all these incredible designs, but the great thing is it doesn't actually look very complicated because that one actually doesn't look very complicated at all. So that is most definitely a beginner quilt. Um, so, but then you've got your slightly more advanced ones. Uh, that would, I'd call that a confident beginner. But that one I definitely call an advanced quilt because as we all know, circles were my nemesis until I tried to defeat them a few weeks ago. Not sure I did, but I tried. Um, and you can see here, these are just ones that, they are quite simple to do. It just takes a bit of time to process how you're doing them all and how you can do it. Because you can see it's all just straight line sewing, sewing those three together, those three together, those three together. So a really, really lovely book, this one. Modern Quilting, 25 projects for 10.99. What's that, it's about 40p, 45p a pattern. Cannot go wrong with that. Modern Quilting by Michael Caputo. Lovely, lovely book, that. I'm putting this under the counter because it's coming home with me. The Witch. <gasps> Yay, I get back to the... Is that that one or that one? Perfect. So this is also the Winterbourne, uh, Winterbourne House collection. This is the pink range. Um, 11 fat quarters of these as well. I'm just going to move some of these out so I can show them to you because they, oh my goodness, there we go. That is my favourite piece of all of the Winterbourne collection. I was very lucky I got to play with that fabric the other day. You can just see these fabrics are lovely. So what I'll do is I'll show it to you as a bundle first to show you exactly what you're getting in your bundle. Just to give you a hint of the colours, try and get that in an angle, they're not all going to fall off. And just see how beautifully well they go together and just the interesting detailing on them all. So we'll then, I'll just show you, this one is my absolute favorite piece in the whole Winterbourne collection. Look at that. Oh, just look how gorgeous that is. Absolutely beautiful. A hint of William Morris, but not William Morris. It's really very, very thoughtfully done. Beautifully designed.
And it's a really lovely quilting weight cotton, this, because a lot of um, Liberty, if people have worked with Liberty before, you'll be very familiar with the Tortona lawn. So what they've done is they've kept the same phenomenal designs um, and the beautiful printing of them, um, but then put it onto a quilting cotton, which people are a bit more confident using rather than the Tortona lawn. And it's a lot cheaper. But you've still got this incredible design element on it, which works so beautifully. Oh, I can't get enough of them. An exclusive to Sewing Street again for the 11 fat quarters on that. And oh, just a lovely, lovely range. So we're going to now look at our Naturals fat quarter bundle in this range. I'm going to fan these all out again so you can see. Oh, they're so beautiful. I feel bad having favourites in, in Liberty Fabrics. It's like having children and trying to pick your favourite child. You all have one, but you're not, you don't want to tell anyone. Having no children, I can make no comments about children, so I'll stop now. Oh, my goodness, I hadn't seen that one. I'm going to do those too. So you can see these are the fabrics you're going to get with it. Just a beautiful combination. I'm going to put them on the side so that I don't get carpal tunnel. <laughs> you can see those a bit better like that. You can just see how gorgeously well they go together. And then I'll show you these two. This looks like a little, I don't know if it's a lemon tree or a peach tree or an orange tree. It just looks so, so beautiful. And the Liberty, I make sure I fold correctly. And then you've got this one as well, just beautiful colorway. So it's just a follow on from my favorite piece of fabric, just in a different colorway. And there we go. I just wanted to check if I had it upside down. You can just see how beautiful that is. Just a lovely, lovely piece of fabric and just a lovely bunch of fabrics. Um, just got six million ideas of what I do with them all. Brilliant. So that's our Naturals range. And now I'm very excited because we've got one of the Annie's quilting books. Annie is a very, very well-known name in the quilting world. Um, I sadly have not come across her books before, which I'm a bit sad about. Um, but I've, I've looked her up and she's very, very popular. Absolutely stunning book though. So you've got big block quilts. This is $8.99. You've got 10 quilts with big impact. So that's working out just under 90p per quilt. Um, quilt pattern. You've got the whimsical medallion there, which is lovely. Can you imagine a beautiful piece of liberty in the middle there? Ooh, yum. Gosh, that is beautiful. Ooh, that's pretty as well. <gasps> barley pops, barley pops. <laughs> and I'd make those into little um, four patches. That is lovely. You've got the middle ribbon. Oh, that's pretty. You can see this design there is really pretty. I think they've made four of those, haven't they? God, they made nine of them. Gosh, that's very good. That's very good. What a beautiful quilt that is. So again, I think they've got the projects in here. So that's quite a beginner quilt, uh, getting everything on point. I'd need to make sure you watch out for your grain on that one. Um, and then you'll be able to do that as a beginner. This one looks quite as a sort of your next step in beginner, if you like, doing the triangle element of it. Oh, a plique. Look at that. Gosh, that's really pretty. So that quilt works out to be 75 inches by 93. And you can see that each one of those is 25 inches square. You can make three of those with that amazing border. Look at that. That's very cute. Gosh, imagine lining all those points up. Oh, that is so beautiful though. Oh, what's really good here is they've got the, um, how you can stitch them. They've decided, they've explained to you what a satin stitch is, zigzag and all of that. And if you want to do it by hand or on machine, it just shows you how that'll come out. What a clever idea. And then all your templates are here. 
See, that's quite a nice um, quilt to do as a beginner as well. What a lovely little book. Oh, that's very cute as well. So that's a lovely little book, Annie's Quilt Book. $8.99 for 10 patterns. Really nice little book, that. Now I know we're coming up to 10 o'clock. I hope you're all ready with your cup of tea, ready to go on our design roll race. We're going to be sending us pictures in, hopefully. Um, Sewing Street TV is our Facebook page. Please make sure that you send everything through to there. And we're looking forward to being able to share this experience with you. That's the whole point of this, is being able to get everybody involved, have the nice community thing, being able to take part in it all. Any questions that you've got, make sure you send them in. I can answer them onto the, while we're on air, I'll be able to answer the questions for you. And we'll be ready at 10 o'clock in order to start all of that. I've got my little bundle ready to go, ready and prepped, which is great. So what I'll do as well, I'll just show you our design roll race. This is what the quilt turned out to be like. Um, and you can see I've got the blue, my, I always got my blues on the bottom, yellows on the top and pinks in the middle. So somebody said to me the other day, this looks like a bit like a New York skyscrapers at the bottom with the sunset at the top. And New York being one of my favorite cities, I cannot disagree with that. So the bundle that we've used to be able to make this quilt is uh, this combination. It is called the, are these, I can't remember what these are called now. Sunset Geometrics, they're Geometrics range, sorry. So this is our Sunset collection on these. And you can see they gradiate from a really dark sort of um, umber color all the way to the beautiful yellow, going from a really dark color all the way through to a beautiful yellow. So that's our lovely color combination there in the Sunset colorway. Um, and then we've got them in the Azure, which is this lovely blue colorway. All of our fabric panels are strips are 55 inches wide. So you'll be able to then see you're getting a lot more fabric than you do in a normal um, two and a half inch uh, set. You can see they gradiate in beautifully with all these different colors. And then the last colorway we have is the, um, the berry. I was about to call it azure and I'm like, no, I've just done azure. So you can see this lovely berry colorway there. Also going from this beautiful deep purple to this gorgeous, subtle, lovely pink. Really nice colorway. And you can see behind me, it's worked so beautifully in this design roll race. And I'm really excited that we can be able to do it. That's coming up at 10 o'clock on the hour. If you do want to do the bundle and you haven't bought them yet, we've got loads available for you. You can follow on from our YouTube channel. Um, and those you're gonna be saving 10 pounds on today, 49 pounds 97. And it makes the quilt run about 64 inches by 78. So we've also got a, we've got a second bundle for you today as well, which I love. So you can see that one's already made up and you can see how that colorway goes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line this up like I did the last time and show you, we've got three of our, in our, our exclusive uh, designs from Sewing Street available. Uh, we've got this one, which is the Paisley Grove collection, which I love. I think it's just such a beautiful colorway. So we've got our Paisley Grove collection here. And you can see all of these beautiful two and a half inch strips go so, so well together in our bundle. That's the first one, which is the Paisley Grove. We've now got our Copen Summer Collection as well. Um, that one you can see as well goes so beautifully there. Got the pitter patter of Joe's little feet running around from room to room, getting that all done. And just see how gorgeous these colors are. But then when I put this down, you'll be able to see how well they go together as well, which, I, which is what I was so excited about. And then the Paisley Marmalade, and um, this is another collection also exclusive to Sewing Street. Look at that. And for this bundle as well, if you're buying all three of these together in our bundle, you'll be saving 10 pounds as well. We do wanted to make sure that people could then, if they didn't like this colorway, perhaps it was a bit bold, you can now do this beautiful colorway for the same bargain price of 49 pounds 97 for those three together. And you can see how beautifully well they go together. And the good thing is, is I would say, take one from each colorway and then do one from each colorway, one from each colorway all the way along, sew them end to end, cut 20 inches off one side, stitch them all together and off we go. Really, really fun process to do this design roll race. And I'm really excited to see how everybody's made theirs. 
you can watch this again. So if you haven't gotten everything ready yet and you want to, let's say you, you see the design roll race today, you're excited about it and you think, actually, I'm going to buy it, but oh, I'm not going to be able to do it with everybody. Don't worry, there'll be many people like you. You can pop them up on your Facebook page as well and people comment there. But you can also then follow on our YouTube channel um, and pick today's date, the 18th of May. 18th of April, 18th of May, um, and make sure you pop that into the search function on our videos and you'll be able to see our design roll race all the way along. They'll be there forever. See, nope. What are we doing? Sorry, getting a message in. What about it? Sorry, I've just got to pull one of these bundles apart to get the... Yes! So, on top of having this bundle uh, with the fabulous Paisley Grove uh, colorway in our bundle that we've just done, we've also got this available individually. This is available for $19.99 on its own. And you can just see how beautiful all these colors are. Really lovely colorway that. Um, and all of them are 55 inches long. So we've been able to see those before. And we've got a fabulous collection of these, fabu of these um, strips available. I'll just show you through some of them that we've got. First of all, we've got our early bird special, which is a really great deal. Um, we've got this colorway here, which is a really lovely thing to do. These are available, how much were these today? Too many prices going on in my head. These are $12.99, 16 strips. Again, just a beautiful, beautiful colorway. And that is just really lovely. That would work really well as well. Really lovely. So, sorry, we've just got these. Um, what number was it, Joe? Uh, KPUU. So we're also selling the Copenhagen, the Copen Summer on its own. So you've got this one available on its own as well for $19.99. But this is already in our bundle as well. So if you liked all three of those together, you're going to save £10 during the bundle. But that's available on its own. Is it Paisley Marmalade? Yep. So next we've got our June Showers collection here. Um, so I'll show you these this way. Whoops. So this is $19.99. I'm just going to move our early bird out of the way, dragging it around the screen. So you can see this beautiful, beautiful combination of colours. Again, 16 pieces of fabric, two and a half inches by, five and a, uh, by 55 inches on that one. That's our June summer's range. And the good thing is, is that you'll be able to see all of these together in our new website uh, with the categories of the panels. And you may be able to find two or three of them that will go together. You'd need at least two of them to be able to do a design roll race. Uh, but three of them make a really nice big, com uh, nice big quilt. Um, just putting these all so I know where we are. Uh, CXUU96. Perfect. So this one is called... This is called In the Kitchen. Um, I'm just going to find an opening. And you can see this is a really lovely range as well. So you can see you've got those beautiful dots and spots and chevrons. And then this one here, which I love, it's got all the spatulas and spoons and whisks surrounding all the flowers. It's just a really fun fun fabric in order to make different projects and things as well. This one I think is really cute. You can make um, covers for your Magi mix and things like that with it. That would work really, really well. And aprons, really good for an apron. So this is our In the Kitchen panel, the second one. So these are different designs to what we've got over there. Oh, it's a mini one. This is the eight coordinating fabrics. Um, this is now half the range of what you're getting on a big one. So you can see just how much you're getting there. No, that didn't work. Sorry, I thought that was going to work, but it didn't. So that's how wide it is um, on the, you can see how big it is. That's how 55 inches there. And then you can see all our different colorways on that. These are eight strips at two and a half inches uh, by 55, and that's $12.99.
So we've now got our harbour collection. Oh, these are these are our 16 harbour pieces. Come on. What am I doing? There we go. Everything's always folded differently, so I get there in the end. So you can see this lovely combination of colours as well. We've got some wonderful combinations of fabric pieces here and fabric strips. So all of these, if you're ever looking to do different projects with them, they do go really well together. And that one is also 19 99 You're getting 16 strips of 55 inches there. Now, this one, we've only got eight strips on this one, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So we've got eight strips of these. And that's 12 99 So you can see you go there. It's just a beautiful, beautiful colorway. Really lovely, that one. I will get this folding thing down one day. Oh no, this is the last one. What have you got here? Oh, I've not seen this one. Ooh, Easter pastels. Oh, that's lovely. So we've got eight strips of this one. Oh no, it's not. Oh, that's lovely. So I'm assuming these are 27 and a half by, sorry, 22 and a half by two and a half inches for each of these strips. And you've got 16 different colors. That's a really good idea. I love those. Those go really, really well together. And lovely, intricate little designs. Should we do look at the design on the overhead? Because you couldn't quite tell the designs from there. So I'll just move that over and we can look at the blues first. I'm wondering if I've got a little piece of paper that I can pop underneath here. There we go, I lifted off the thing and you can see, but you can just see these gorgeous little detailing on these. And on the pink, you've got that lovely detailing as well. And on the yellow. And on the purple. The colours on this overhead are not exactly what you're getting. What we showed you earlier, but I was just doing this so you can see the actual beautiful detailing on the fabric as well. Because I think sometimes you miss that. And obviously not being in the shop and being able to feel it yourself. I want to make sure you can see as much as you can. And that's now our Easter panel. 12 99 for eight strip, uh, 16 strips, which are 22 and a half. Uh, by two and a half. And don't forget, we've got our lovely early bird sale on this uh, early bird fabric here. So just so you can see all these detailing on these wonderful fabrics here. I'm just going to pull that over here. But it's nice to be able to have that mix of the reds to the blues. It's really cleverly done. And you can see that last little colour on there, the dark blue is beautiful. These are $12.99 today as an early bird special. They'll be available all day or until st while stocks last. Hmm, we'll... let's look at this on the overhead actually. I'm going to get Joe to zoom in on that. Uh, there we go. You can just see these are so pretty, really, really lovely. This is so cute. And what I love is you've got all these beautiful little crisscrosses here. Can we zoom in on this one, Joe? You can just see that lovely little pop of, of a lighter blue in the middle. Just makes that that little bit more interesting. And if I slide this along, you can see all those beautiful leaves and the dots. Oh, look at the little stripy flowers. And our little pays, no, what's uh, checkered. I'll go that, sorry, that, sorry, I'm making you all go dizzy there. There we go, so you've got that beautiful flower there as well. Nice little polka dot, and I'm now pulling it at an appropriate speed. Right, so everybody close your eyes, I'm gonna flip the fabric. Close your eyes, close your eyes. <laughs> there we go, Joe. So you can see you've got the same detailing here, but just in the other color way. I feel like I need to get a better movement on these. But it's a really lovely colourway. I think people would really enjoy this. And we've got one more to go. Every loves a blue little dot. So a really lovely little collection there of strips. Uh, this is our, oh, it's called the British Design Roll. Excuse me. 
love that. So yeah, twelve ninety nine for our early bird today. That's available on the website and while stocks last. So we've got our the what? So we're going to do our design roll race in a few minutes. I'm very excited. Um, we've got our lovely bundle here. We, this is going to be the finished quilt that you've been making. Yours will come out in a different way, just depending on how you've sewn it all together. Uh, my blues went to the bottom, my yellows went to the top, and my pinks uh, went in the middle, which is just a beautiful colorway. I'm um, very excited because I got, came up with this. I love it. I'm so, so thrilled. Really, it's just, and I, what I love about it most is that in these worlds at the moment, none of us can go near each other. We can't do anything. And I'm very bored of this now. I want to see my friends. I want to hug them. I want to just tell them all that I love them and I miss them. But now we can't do that because we're still in this situation, making sure everybody's staying safe and supporting all the people working so hard to keep us so safe. Thank you all. But now we're able to now take part and do something online together in a new way of doing things. We're trying to make an adaption and do this this way. So it's really nice to be able to build up a little community because we've got a fantastic group of fans out there. Really lovely community already. And now it's just something nice to be, for us all to be able to take part. We've got this fabulous kit that we're doing. Um, as you can see behind us, there are three different colorways on it. This is our uh, Sunrise Geometrics. And I just love the detailing on all these different colors. You can see those beautiful designs in the background on them. It just makes everything flop everything flop everything pop <laughs> i was saying pop and flip i was gonna say pop and i'm gonna flip it <laughs> sorry about that it's these early starts my brain doesn't like them and you can just see all those beautiful designs on there it goes really really well and that's the sunset one i wish there was an automatic folding system and then we've got our azure fabrics which is our gorgeous blue can see there I'm not going to unfold it all because it just means one more fold how have I done this already there we go let's do that again and I promise not to flip or plop you can see all of those Oh my goodness, Joe is saying really silly things in my ear. That was really funny. So I'm going to slide this along. You go from the really beautiful light blue over here in our screen over here, all the way to a gorgeous dark blue. And you can see these gorgeous geometric shapes on there as well, which just shows so beautifully on this blue fabric. Uh, had this image of having a John Scott moment of laughing my head off on it. Uh, so we've got this gorgeous berry one as well which is really nice. I can't decide which one I like best actually. So you can see it goes from that really dark sort of plummy mulberry color all the way through to this beautiful light pink. And then these three panels um, with the design roll panels I've just shown you, the geometrics, those are £49.97 in the bundle today, saving you £10. So the design roll race is going to be going on to YouTube. Uh, so if you haven't been able to take part and you still want to do the project once we've finished, it'll all go onto our YouTube channel, which is Sewing Street. Uh, it's not, yes, yeah, Sewing Street. And if you subscribe to that, you'll get a little email every time our show is uploaded. You'll get an email or a notification, um, and that'll always be available on there for you to be able to watch back and be able to see where we are. And any other shows you want to watch, they'll all be on there as well. So we're going to go for a break in a little while. And when we go for that break, there's going to be a, a, a video to show you exactly what it is that we're going to have done or what people would have done to get to the point of where we are now. Um, so that'll explain everything as to where we are. Um, and then if you haven't been able to prepare anything or get everything ready for us, not a problem. You just catch up later and you'll be able to then do that later. But do stay involved, send questions in, uh, comment on everybody's pictures and videos that have been going on. I've, I, before I start, went on air, I saw a couple of videos and a couple of photos of people's stuff going on. So that was really nice to be able to see all of that. So I'm really looking forward to that. Hmm? So also your progress photos. So as you're going along, you'll be able to then send in the pictures of how far along you've come and where you're at. Um, and again, any questions, you can pop them on there and you will be able to try and answer those while we're doing it on air. But I'm very excited about this and I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody's done. And yeah, that'll be coming up in a little while. So I've got my lovely bundle here ready to go. And you can see now. So this is where we're all going to be ready to. I've told everybody to sew to 
um, four strips each. So you can see already that my strips are going to be slightly different because what I did with mine is I cut mine in half. I did some half and I, I think I did half in half. No, I didn't. I let, made one long, two halves, one long, two halves, one long, two halves, and then I alternated them all the way through. So I think that's going to give a totally different look to the quilt behind me. But this is how much I've got ready to go. So we're going to be sewing all of this together. I'm hoping the machine lasts. Uh, it will, because it's an amazing machine. So we're going to be able to put all of those together. Um, we're going to make 4 to 8, 8 to 16, and then 16 to 32. If you've gotten to the 4 part, you've done 2 thirds of the quilt. So you're almost there. So whatever you've got left to do, it's, even, it's less than half of what you've got to do left. So now we're going to have a little break, get everything ready. There'll be a little video about what we're going to be doing over the after the hour. Make sure you stay involved on our social media, please. We're monitoring it as quickly as we can. And then whatever you put on, we're going to try and get your pictures up on air. So if you put it, pop any pictures on of your progresses, and I want to see your colorways and how you're doing it, pop them on and we'll be able to do those because it's going to be very boring just watching me going through a showing machine. So you can actually help us by popping your pictures up so we'll be able to make sure we can share those with everybody. I'll see you in five minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm John Col Morgan, and I'm here to show you what we need to get ready for our sew along on the 18th of April. You're going to see a hyperlapse video of me doing really, really quick work on how to make this wonderful quilt to get you ready if you'd like to sew along with us and what you need to do. So the first thing you're going to do, either using a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter, whichever you feel more comfortable with, you're going to separate all 48 of your different strips, being the uh, sunrise, sunset, the azure and the berry, break those all up and keep them in order from dark to light in each colourway. In the way that I did the quilt for the show, I had dark berry to light berry and then I decided to go light blue to dark blue and then the dark sunset to the light sunset. So now you would have taken your design rolls and you would have cut them all into these amazing strips that go from light to dark. I piled them up in half going from light to dark as I cut them off the roll. So I have the, the berry one. Uh, no, this is the sunset one. I have the azure and I have the berry one. That's the sunset, the azure and the berry one. So what I'm doing now is I've decided that these ones are quite close together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these ones from light to dark, but I'm going to turn these round and do dark to light. So what I'm going to join do is take one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, then one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, and just go in order and sew them all together. So these are when I say sew them together, these are going to be the short ends here. So that will be sewn together to one of these. This will be sewn to one of those, those will be one of the, on the short end. Once you've separated your blocks and you've decided that you're going to now stitch these all together, you're going to take the short ends of your strips and you're going to sew those together. The way I decided to do it was I went from orange, blue, berry, and I kept that order going. So you had a dark orange, light blue, dark berry, and decreasing all the way around until you had a light orange, dark blue, light berry. Once you've now sewn your short ends together and you have a 1700 odd inch piece of fabric, you're going to take one side and you're going to cut 20 to 30 inches off one side of this fabric long strip. Reason being is that if you don't, you're not going to have any movement of the fabric throughout the quilt and it will just be the same as sewing the whole grid together and that isn't going to be what we need. Once you've done that, you're going to take the two raw edges of your fabric, which aren't sewn together, put them right sides together and you're going to sew along one side of the fabric. Fabric. So after you've done all of that, you're going to come to the end and there will always be a kink, a curve, a wobble, don't worry. Literally fold in half as close as you can get it to half and cut it. I know everybody just freaked out a little bit, but I promise you it doesn't matter. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to sew this off to get to the very end. You just fold those to the edge there and you sew to the end. At this point, you're now going to take your rotary cutter and your ruler and you're going to square the edge of your, of your um, pieces off. 
This is how far you'll need to get to be able to join me in the sew along and sew along with me on the 18th at about 9, 9.30. So please, any questions, drop me a line on social media and thank you so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the 18th. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, welcome back. I'm John Cole Morgan and we are at our very first Sewing Street Design Roll Sew Along. I have not done one of these before, nor have we. I am very excited. A um, couple of little bit of things to let you know about. We've had some upgrades on our website. Very, very exciting. So if any of you want to look at them, you'll be able to go on to sewingstreet.com as usual. Um, I'm hoping that that awful picture of me is not always going to be there, but there we go. That's me. Um, and if you click that on, I think Joe's just said that that's permanently there on purpose now. Yay! <laughs> so if you wanted to ever watch us live, if you click on that, that would do us, um, that will show you where we are live. But now we have this wonderful feature here called Shop Our Catalog. Uh, and I'm going to try and find my mouse. There we go. So when you've done, when you want to look in that, so we've now broken, because we've got 19 pages of product at the moment, we thought that's getting a little bit hard. So what we'll do is we'll create a little catalog of different bits and bobs that we've got on the website. So you can see now we've broken them up. We've got books and patterns, fabric panels. So if you're looking for any of our design role uh, ideas, you can pop in there and look at our strips on that. Pattern fabrics, plain fabrics, kits, tools, machines. So let's say we want to go and look at our books or, and patterns. You can then just click on that. And you've got all the different books in there. Oh, there's my name. Oh, it's our quilt instructions. So, so, so the, um, you can see all the different bits and bobs here all the different books that we've got, all the patterns we've got for sale, and we'll be able to go through on all of that. And you can see there's loads, it's brilliant. And we've got two pages on that as well. It just breaks everything up. So if you know exactly what you're looking for, you'll be able to find that a lot easier than you were before. So now we are doing our design roll sew along. So many of you have been busy already um, and what you've done already is you've been able to sew all of your pieces together. Um, if you haven't, don't worry. This is going to be on YouTube and we'll show you a video in a few minutes to show you exactly where you need to get up to um, at that point. Um, what we've done today is we've got this lovely bundle of three uh, geometric colorways that we've now taken. These are a bundle today available for $49.97. Um, they've got all these beautiful colors. I've shown those a few times and I'll show you again later. That would make this lovely quilt over here. However you lay your fabrics, it'll come out. So each quilt will be different. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to get the yellow at the top, pink in the middle and blue at the bottom. Uh, this quilt comes out at roughly 64 inches by 78. Um, and we'll be able to now watch a little video as to how we get to that point to get you ready to get to the point where we're about to sew along. So this video will be on now and I'll see you after.
Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan, and I'm here to show you what we need to get ready for our sew along on the 18th of April. You're going to see a hyperlapse video of me doing really, really quick work on how to make this wonderful quilt to get you ready if you'd like to sew along with us and what you need to do. So the first thing you're going to do, either using a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter, whichever you feel more comfortable with, you're going to separate all 48 of your different strips being the uh, sunrise, sunset, the azure and the berry, break those all up and keep them in order from dark to light in each colorway. In the way that I did the quilt for the show, I had dark berry to light berry and then I decided to go light blue to dark blue and then the dark sunset to the light sunset. So now you would have taken your design rolls and you would have cut them all into these amazing strips that go from light to dark. I piled them up in half going from light to dark as I cut them off the roll. So I have the, the berry one, uh, no, this is the sunset one. I have the azure and I have the berry one. That's the sunset, the azure and the berry one. So what I'm doing now is I've decided that these ones are quite close together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these ones from light to dark, but I'm gonna turn these round and do dark to light. So what I'm going to join do is take one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, then one from that pile, one from that pile, one from that pile, and just go in order and sew them all together. So these are when I say sew them together, these are going to be the short ends here. So that will be sewn together to one of these. This will be sewn to one of those. Those will be one of the on the short end. Once you've separated your blocks and you've decided that you're going to now stitch these all together, you're going to take the short ends of your strips and you're going to sew those together. The way I decided to do it was I went from orange, blue, berry and I kept that order going so you had a dark orange, light blue, dark berry and decreasing all the way around until you had a light orange, dark blue, light berry. Once you've now sewn your short ends together and you have a 1700 odd inch piece of fabric, you're going to take one side and you're going to cut 20 to 30 inches off one side of this fabric long strip. Reason being is that if you don't, you're not going to have any movement of the fabric throughout the quilt and it will just be the same as sewing the whole grid together and that isn't going to be what we need. Once you've done that, you're going to take the two raw edges of your fabric, which aren't sewn together, put them right sides together and you're going to sew along one side of the fabric. Fabric. So after you've done all of that, you're going to come to the end and there will always be a kink, a curve, a wobble, don't worry. Literally fold in half as close as you can get it to half and cut it. I know everybody just freaked out a little bit, but I promise you it doesn't matter. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to sew this off to get to the very end. You just fold those to the edge there and you sew to the end. At this point, you're now going to take your rotary cutter and your ruler and you're going to square the edge of your, of your um, pieces off. This is how far you'll need to get to be able to join me in the sew along and sew along with me on the 18th at about 9, 9.30. So please, any questions, drop me a line on social media and thank you so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the 18th. Welcome back. I'm hoping that all made sense. So that is now where we're at. We're at that point where I've got four of them together, I've straightened all the edges and we're ready to go. Now a couple of people have asked me a few questions on this. First of them being, what if I'm not ready? I didn't know about it. I want to take part, but I'm, I'm not ready yet. Don't worry. It's all going to be on YouTube later. So you'll be able to then, we'll try and get it as a separate hour as well. So you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to watch it and keep up with us and see exactly what we're doing on that. Um, so yes, please keep posting your project uh, progress pictures. Um, I think we've got a couple already. I know one of my friends is going to be taking part from on from Quebec in Canada. She's gotten up at about, what's it, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning for her. She's busy getting up and doing this already. So I'm very excited to have all these people. But please send in your pictures send in your progress uh, processes your progresses and see and this is where you're going to be doing it it'll be on facebook.com slash sewing street and you'll be able to then share any pictures and progress pictures you've got also people have used um, different uh, products to be able to do this so you'll be able to then send your different colorways and show us what you're up to 
So many people have asked, what is a design roll race? So a design roll race is our take on what was traditionally known as the jelly roll race. Uh, we don't sell jelly rolls, we sell design rolls. So we decided to do a design roll race using our product. Um, and what it is, is we're taking all of those strips, we cut them from our panel individually, uh, so you're going to have 48 different strips of 55 inches. Um, and when we now sew those uh, short edge, so you're going to sh sew that short edge there onto, let's, I don't know which way you've done it, whatever way you like, onto this edge there. And you're going to sew the short ends together. So you'll have a piece of fabric that's all sewn together, which is, I think, 2,400 and something inches this way by two and a half. Just a cute couple, you know, and I promise you, you only feel that 2,400, I think it's 2,498, you only feel that on the first run, because, oh my goodness, it's like you've been sewing forever, which is why I got you to do all of that before we go. So that would have been sewing those two bits together, so let's just, just pretend that that bit's not there. So that was the first run, you're going to sew these two strips together, quarter of an inch down the side, so your two, let's call it two and a half thousand, your two and a half thousand inches are cut down to two, uh, half that which is twelve and a half hundred, uh, twelve and a half, twelve thousand, oh my goodness I can't talk today, one thousand two hundred and fifty inches. That now is going to be cut down by sewing these two together, in half, then we'll have 625 inches left. So at this point, if you haven't done it, don't worry, it's on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Sewing Street. It'll be in the video section so you can catch up later. So what I've done now is I've got my fours. So our 1200 inches go like that. I've literally just taken it, put them together, right sides together, and I've tried to get out all the little curves and kinks and bumps and everything from here, and I've got it together all on the table, ready to sew into strips of eight, which is what I'm going to do now. Now, I, w I am here, but I really want to see all your progress pictures. I really want to see what colorways you've chosen, because I know people have chosen barley pops, um, and I know people from Canada are taking part. Hello, Tracy. So please drop us a line. We really, really want to hear from you, and we really want to be involved. Um, all I'm doing now is I've got my lovely 680 machine here. I've lined it up to a quarter inch seam, and we're ready to go. So, uh, off we go. I have put this on the fastest speed. Yes. Perfect. So if you do like this colorway um, of the design roll strips, you'll be able to buy these as a bundle. These are going to be discounted down for you today at £49.97 because we want people to be able to be involved and we wanted to bring you a bit of a bargain so you'll be able to take part in this. And that's £49.97 for the three panels. That will give you 48 strips of two and a half inches. And I've just realised the reason this isn't going very fast is my stitch length was quite small. So all I'm doing now is I'm going to get to a point when I've just gone past the seam here. All I'm doing here is I'm taking, I'm sewing four strips to make eight strips. So I'm sewing on this line here and I'm just sewing a quarter of an inch all the way down, a quarter of an inch here all the way down from the top of this piece down to the bottom. So that's going to take 1250 inches down to, no, 1250 to 625, so this is going to take 625 inches down to 310, and I know it's not 310, but I'm sorry, we're going to get to the point where I can't do the numbers anymore. And as an accountant, that's embarrassing. <clears throat> so, lining these all up. So have you got any progress pictures yet? Oh, we've had three sent in, so Joe's going to pop those up now in a little bit. Mm. This is my Tracy from Canada. So Tracy, it's what, what time is it now? It's about 10 o'clock, so it's 5 a.m. I know Tracy's been up since 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. because uh, she was up when I left the house this morning. Um, so Tracy, this is her colorway. Gosh, look at that. Oh, I know, she's so talented, this girl.
And doing this standing up, I'm going to have to change feet. Because <laughs> it's not natural standing up and sewing for this. <clears throat> And I tell you now, once you've done a few of these, your quarter inch seam will be perfect. Promise you now it will. And I'm lucky because this needle, uh, this machine is stopping with the needle down, which will make your life a lot easier, being able to keep your needle down. <clears throat> Can you what? So all I'm doing now is I'm just working in sort of eight to 10 inch increments. Um, there is no possible, you can go and pin this all the way, but I'm telling you now, you're gonna stab yourself and it's really not worth it. You, all you're doing is that you can see my needles down um, and I've got my, my needles down at the moment. Can you see? Yes, so my needles down there. All I'm doing is I'm holding about that far away. So it's about 10 inches and I'm making sure I've got my quarter inch lined up for that 10 inches and I'm only working it for that 10 inches and making sure it's lined up. So at the point that I'm not sure if it's still lined up, I'm letting the needle go down, readjusting my fabric and going. If that's too much for you and 10 inches is too far, <clears throat> you can only you can do as little as you like. If you want to pin it, you're welcome to. Um, you're a better person than I. I don't think I could cope. <clears throat> oh, we've had a message in from Susie. Hello, Susie. If she's not great at keeping a quarter inch seam allowance, what are my tips? <clears throat> Susie, that was one of my biggest problems when I started out on this process as well. And my advice to you is, go bigger rather than smaller. If you go too small, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat there. <clears throat> if you make your seam too small, there's a risk the seam will, will break and your fabric will come apart. But if your seam is too big, the worst that's gonna happen is your, your, your quilt will be slightly smaller than everybody else's. Keep it a little bit bigger until you feel more confident to do it. Quarter inch foot would help as well. Um, failing that, a, a really good way of doing it is a really simple way. Use your normal um, sewing foot, which on this machine is your A foot. Uh, line up your quarter inch with, a, with a, the needles dropping down and take some tape and put it on, the, on your sewing machine, but put it from where your needle, uh, from where your bobbin loads, so not on the plate, but just off the plate, but take it all the way down here. So even down here, because then what you're doing is you're lining your fabric up before you even get to the stitching. So you'll be able to see over here, or well, actually on this machine, it's already pre-marked for me. So I know if I've lined this on this machine up to 11 and a half, that's gonna get me to my quarter inch all the way. So just that's another nice little tip that somebody showed me, which I think works really, really well. Not quite sure why I had my hand at the back there. Don't need to feed it all the way back. Maybe I'm gripping on for dear life. So the feed dogs are doing most of the work for me here. You can see I'm just gently guiding the fabric with my left hand and I'm holding everything nice and secure. So I've just seen uh, one of my pieces of fabric has shifted a little bit there. So I can tell that that seam's going to give way. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna re-stitch just over that section. So if you have made a mistake and you have realized and you catch it at the time, just go back and refix it then and there because then you don't have to worry about anything given, giving way. And you, by that, I'm not sure we'll be able to zoom in too much, but you can see my stitching is just too small there. That will completely give way. <clears throat> So the great thing is, is what you'll see now is um, I've thrown this on the floor and over here, I've thrown that on the floor too. You do not need a big space for this. You literally, you can do it on a small space. As long as you've got space on the floor there, you've got space on the floor there, that's great. My top tip though, check there's nothing on the floor first. Ask me how I know. Right, we're getting there.
Well, I'm hoping you're all getting along quite well at home. Quarter inch seam is quite important, but it's more about being consistent. So if you haven't got a quarter inch, just make sure you're consistent on it and that will work fine. So this 680 plus that I'm working with at the moment, and I've just lost my shoe. How have I lost my shoe? <laughs> I, I don't sew with shoes on, so I take my shoes off. So I've just lost my shoe with the fabric there. This 680 machine comes already with a quarter inch foot as standard, <clears throat> which is gonna help a lot in this process. There it is, sorry, just looking for my unpicker. I've got a thread caught in my quarter inch foot. Oh, we've had another picture in from Sarah. Morning, Sarah. Oh, wow, Sarah, your colors are lovely. That is really nice. You see how everybody has done this all differently. I think that's fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited to see what everybody comes up with. So the next question I get asked a lot is when do you press? So I like fewer steps in this process. So I don't press until the very end. Um, and I press it at the very end before it's about to go on my quilting machine. If you want to press each stitch, each seam as you go, you're most welcome to. Um, I just think that because you've got so much fabric, no matter how much you press it, it's always going to get squished up again. So I would rather wait till the end because it doesn't matter if these aren't pressed because it's not going to affect the quilt in any way whatsoever. So for me, I'm trying to save as much time as possible um, to be able to make more quilts. Um, so I'd rather then just press this all at the very end before it goes onto the quilting machine. Because you can see the one hanging behind me, that hasn't been pressed yet either. But that's also been in a bag for a week. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right, that's how I do it. So if you want to press as you go, you are most welcome to. It's your quilt, you must do what makes works for you. And if you want to pin this the whole way, you're most welcome to. It's what works best for you. It's your quilt. So almost there, getting there, we're almost there. The end, oh, it's not in sight. Okay, we're not almost there. But the great thing is each time you sew a seam and you sew an end, you recommend, you just say, well, that's another half done because you're doing a half of a half of a half of a half. I think that was five. We'll just do an and a half for good luck. One thing I've done here is I've pressed my seams open. That doesn't necessarily mean that's right. You must do what works for you. Um, you can see there, I just prefer pressing my seams open. Now, one thing to show you here, I was a little bit creative with my cutting here. So what that was is I was using the rotary cutter and I stopped paying attention. We've all done it and I know that your pieces are going to be there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line this bit up over here, which I know is right. Uh, I'm going to line this bit up over here, which I know is right. And I'm going to line this bit up here, which I know is right. And you'll see I'm going to have a little lip in the middle there. Where am I? Sorry, I think I'm gonna have to go onto camera one if you can, Joe. Or do, yeah, do the camera one. So I'm gonna have a little bit of an overlap there. I'm gonna leave that overlap and rather sew a larger seam in the middle, uh, just rather that way than the, the seam give way because the seam was too small. That's why I'd rather have it too big than too small. Oh, actually I'd rather have cut it correctly the first time and not made an error. But hey, you can't turn back time. Right, needle down. I'm at that point now where I need to correct it. So I'm just realigning my fabric to make sure that that seam goes along nicely. And there we go. So we've had a question in from June. Morning. <clears throat> Her question is, have I done a lot of design roll races? 
So, when I started quilting about five years ago, I was properly terrible, and I mean properly terrible. So I then also was struggling to meet people to do quilting um, <clears throat> in central London. There are not that many quilters um, that I could find. Uh, there weren't that many shops. So I was really struggling to connect with people. So what I did was I then went and looked up online on the online community to try and find people online. And I then came across Jenny Doan, who said, uh, who did, started the, who did a video on the Jelly Roll race. Um, and then I decided, I created my own Facebook group. And then when I created the Facebook group, I got loads of people on there. And then everybody tells you when you're doing any form of social media, you have to keep the content flowing. You've got to keep people entertained. So then I thought to myself, just it was eight weeks after starting the group, I then set myself a challenge to make uh, 28 quilt tops, sorry, 25 quilt tops in 30 days. And as often happens on the internet, people turn around and go, you're not going to do that, you're an idiot, you'll never do that, you're an idiot. So a complete stranger told me that I was an idiot and literally put on there, you're an idiot, you'll never do that. And of course the inspiration was there and I made 28 quilt tops, uh, 25 quilt tops in 28 days, three days ahead of, uh, two days ahead of schedule. And most of those were the Jelly Roll race. Um, a bit like the design roll race, but our, our strips are a lot longer. And the good thing with that was, is by just literally pushing through and having that challenge, I then made sure that my seams were, my seams were, I didn't even worry about a quarter inch after that, because after you make about four or five of these, um, they are, it's just second nature to you, your quarter inch, you don't worry about the quarter inch anymore. So it was really nice to have that challenge and be able to do a task that actually was a bit bonkers and some of those quilts the fabric i don't know what i was thinking but either way that was the it was a really great process to be able to do that um, and i used really rubbish fabric first and then used my really nice fabric afterwards when i was more confident to make sure that it was um something i felt confident would look good so i have made probably 50 of these 40 or 50 of these because <clears throat> they're also really good for um, for gifts as well. And if you want to do like a Christmas one, you go and get one or two jelly rolls or design rolls, which are Christmas flavor, uh, Christmas flavored, Christmas themed, and you're able to then do those nice and easily. And they're really they're relatively quick makes. So this one, I think the the one behind me, I think took four and a half, maybe five hours to make from beginning to end. And that's you know that's a really easy project to do in a day. And it's mindful and you just, you put some wonderful music on or an audio book or a box set and you just sit there and you forget about the world. Or you can sit and watch me for a couple of hours. That'll be lovely. I heard the best compliment I've ever had, which my husband totally and utterly disagrees with, is one lady turned around and she says, I love having John on in the background. I love having John on in the background. His voice is so soothing. And my husband turned when I said, I said, oh, what a nice comment. And he turned to me and said, she lied. Isn't that awful? <laughs> Bless him. He doesn't mean it. I know he doesn't. <clears throat> so now we're getting to the point where that's all we've got left. Okay, so let's now just look at this. So if you've done this and there's a twist, we're going to imagine that there's a twist in this. So let's just say there's a twist. Just like you saw in my video before, it doesn't matter because we can square it up afterwards. Just cut it, cut it, and we're just gonna pretend there's a twist in it. Just roughly cut this. It doesn't matter because you're gonna square it off afterwards. You can see I've really roughly cut that. Just roughly cut it because we're gonna square everything up. Because if you get to this point and there is a curve, it's a real pain to try and sew close up to it. So rather, when you get to that point, find roughly where the middle's gonna be, cut off the end. And we're now at 310 inches. Oh, who, who was that? Sally, you're joining in. Just, Sally just sent a message in that she's joining in with us in her conservatory on her iPad and she's ignoring the rain. Oh, it was quite torrential coming in this morning. So we're having, we heard another message in from Shannon? Shava. So, sorry, Shava. Um, Shava's joining in with us from Rutland. How wonderful. Lovely to have you. 
with a not so helpful cat. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, so what I'm doing now, so this bit's a little bit more important. So I'm going to ask Joe to go to the overhead. So, oh, I think I'm, is that better? Sorry, I thought you said put my, just my mic. I thought I was, the other day I was bump, uh, throwing things against my mic all day and I thought Joe said that. So you can see now that that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at then, that's a bit squiffy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down a little bit below there and I'm gonna line these lines up on my seam, on my seams, I'm gonna line these up to try and get as straight a line as possible. And if you don't get it completely straight, it doesn't matter. But the, the way you would do it is you line all of these seams up on your ruler. So you can see there it's lined up, there it's lined up, and then on the end of the fabric, you try and line that up as much as possible. So you're just trying to make sure that everything is as lined up as it can be. And there we go. You've cut through all of that. So we've now got eight strips together. Now, there's no way of telling still how this is going to look because it's still so different. And now, if I sew on this side versus this side, it will change the quilt completely. So that's what's so great about this is it's completely random and you've no idea what you're going to come out with. Oh my goodness, we've got less than 20 of these bundles left if you wanted to take take part. You can watch it in the YouTube uh, channel later, but there are less than 20 if you want to take part or make another one. Maybe you've made one and your family and friends loved it, um, then you can share that with them. I definitely would love to see some more pictures, Joe. Have you got any more? Uh, wonderful. Oh my goodness, Eileen! <gasps> that is gorgeous! Oh, how wonderful. Eileen, that is stunning. Well done. And then we've got the next one. Penny! That's my friend. Hello, Penny. She's got eight and ironing. One, oh, she's doing the good. She's being a good girl, ironing as she goes. See, Penny's one of my ladies who comes on retreats with me. She's very good like that. And we've got the last one. Oh, how lovely. Those are beautiful. You can tell how gorgeous that is. So what Penny's done there is she's cut a cream square out to break her fabrics up, which is a lovely way of doing it. Really, really good, good way of adding a little bit of detail to the fabric. So all I'm doing now, you'll be able to see my arms are up in the air. All I'm doing is I've got my strips ready. I'm just trying to make sure that as I'm sewing, everything's going to be straight and they haven't got any kinks in it. So there we go. Oh. It gets a lot easier to make sure that there are no wobbles in your fabric with the morph um, that you sew on. Right, Joe, am I sewing on the left or the right? The right. Perfect. So now I'm going to sew on the right over here. So again, that will completely change the way your quilt lines up and how it comes out by just deciding which side you're going to quilt it or which side you're going to stitch on. Because if I sew down this line, I'd have a totally different quilt than I would if I sewed down this one. So if this one doesn't work out, it's Joe's fault. Is that a deal? Perfect. Send all of your complaints to Joe. I'll give you his personal mobile number. <laughs> oh, but we don't get complaints. Everybody's so lovely. And now this is getting a little bit heavier, so what I would do is I actually am going to pick this up and put it on the table, only because, um, and this is, if you haven't got a big table, put it on a chair. The only reason being is that there's a lot of weight hanging off that. I just want to make it a little bit easier for myself by doing that. But if you're comfortable having it on the floor, you do that, whatever works best for you. I'm so excited to see these. We've got a very high table here as well. Totally different as well to be able to get the camera angles and all that. It's not quite high enough to hide my fat tummy, but there we go. I don't quite think I'd be able to stand with it. You know, if I've hide all my flabby bits, I'd have to have it up above my eyeballs. You wouldn't see any of me. Anybody else find that they go into the fridge a lot more than these days than you used to? 
I actually put a sign in my fridge the other day saying, John, you're not hungry, you're bored, go away, you don't need to eat it. <laughs> Got to be done. Joe's just telling me there was a, uh, somebody on the radio the other day going and saying, I've got a triangle in my life. I go from the sofa to the fridge to the cupboard, to the sofa to the fridge to the cupboard. <laughs> it's brilliant. Because we're all doing that at the minute, I think. Well, anything we have to do to stay safe, that's what we're going to do. And we've had a few questions about how we're doing everything here. We're on a very skeleton staff, just Joe and myself. Two metres apart at all times. Making sure we're doing everything possible. It's wonderful because we get to antibacterialise everything afterwards and before and the machine gets a little wash every single time somebody touches it or looks at it. It's great. I kind of want them all to come home with me and do it there. Come on. I have to say, my husband is doing this wonderful job at the moment. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much about my husband at the moment. But I think everybody is doing it at the moment. The more you've got time, the more you spend time at home and you think, actually, I'm going to dust, dust that. I'm going to tidy that. I'm going to clean that. I'm going to do that. All those jobs you've been putting off. I do feel sorry for people's husbands at home, though, because they keep saying to their wives, don't nag me, I'll get to it. I've got no excuse now, you poor things. I feel very sorry for you. So my heart goes out to you all. So you can see we're almost there now. We're almost at the end of the eight. So you can see it's not quite as daunting when you get to this size. And I see I'm a good I'm good in the way that I don't even look at the quilt until it's finished. I want to I keep myself as a little surprise. I'm hoping everybody's enjoyed this because I've really loved doing these. It's just something that's different about this. It's so easy and it's you don't you can be a beginner you can be an advanced you can do whatever you like it's just that community everybody kind of sewing along doing the same thing i think is a really lovely thing to do And the more fabric I've got on the, on the table at the moment, I'm actually guiding it in with my hand because I just think it's, you don't have to, the feed dogs are fantastic on these machines, you don't need to. Um, I just feel like it's a little bit easier, it just makes that, my life a little bit easier lining up that quarter inch by just gently guiding everything along over here. So we've pre, on the previous run, four became eight. On this run, eight is becoming 16. And then only one more run and we're done. But I'm so excited because Penny was sending me the pictures of her barley pops and that is my absolute favourite collection of barley pops. We've got them on the show today as well, so I'll be able to show them to you after this. But those barley pops work really well on this combination as well. But what I like about this is it's not just, this may be a project that you're doing as a one-off or for the first time, but once you've done them and you've seen how effective they are and how lovely they turn out, you can then be able to see, actually, I'm going to try more of these. That one of Eileen's is beautiful, wasn't it? Oh, just lost all my fabric off the top. It's OK, it doesn't matter if it does. I'm just trying not to put too much weight on the needle. So, and I'd rather block all the camera views so that Joe has to work harder to find out how we're doing this. <laughs> Almost there. So the way I separated my strips for this um, 
for this roll compared to the other. The first one that's hanging on the wall behind me, what I did is I cut the strips out whole um, and I took 20 inches off the very first one and how I positioned them was I had dark orange to light orange and then I had light blue to dark blue. So my first pile was dark orange to light orange and then I had light blue to dark blue and then I had dark berry to light berry and I went orange, blue, berry, orange, blue, berry and went all the way through doing it that way and that was how this quilt was made. But remember each time you sew it, whatever side you sew it on, it's going to go differently. So if I'd sewn them to the left for example instead of the right, the blue may have been in the middle rather than the pink. So that's how I did it on the first one which is the one hanging behind me and then what I did with this is I had them same dark orange to light orange, uh, dark orange to light orange, dark blue, uh, light blue to dark blue, dark berry to light berry, exactly the same. But I took a whole strip, whole strip, whole strip, and then I did half a strip, 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 half a strip. It was four lots. So I did, so I had a whole one, cut two in half, did a whole one, cut two in half. And that was the routine, the way that I did it all the way through the quilt. That's how this one came out. So if you're looking at the different methods, there are loads of different ways you can do them. You can cut them all in half and have a totally different quilt. You could cut just maybe the middle 10 in half and have a totally different quilt. So again, I'm now at the end. Um, so this one I can see is completely straight. So I'm going to do this very differently uh, than the last time. I'm not hacking any bit off the end. Oh, we've had a message in from Francesca. Hello, Francesca. She's saying hello. From where in Wales? From rainy Wales. Hello, it's the, and she's loving the design role. Oh, I'm so pleased. A message in from? Savvy. Hello, Savvy. She's loving watching the design role race with John. Thank you very much. Very good demo, and she'll be trying this soon. Was that this weekend? Oh, how lovely. Thank you so much. That's lovely to hear from you. Message in from Janet. Hello, John. Oh, you're not flabby. Janet, I'm so kind. You're very kind. You should have gone to Specsavers, but you're very kind. <laughs> We're all doing, and myself and Joe and everybody else are doing a wonderful job. Thank you all so much. Message in from Maureen. Hello, Maureen. Could you tell me what, what size backing? R Batting and backing. Right, so for me, right, I'm going to cut this first. I'm coming back to that, Maureen. Give me 30 seconds. So all I'm doing here is I'm lining these up, just like I did the last time round, just to try and get it straight. Now, if you don't get it completely straight, it doesn't matter, because once you've quilted it, you can then trim the edges off and make it straight from there. So all I'm doing is just lining that all up, cutting my edge off, and voila. You can see that's my little colorway on this end, which I'm loving that. Um, has that gone all the way through? Yes, it has. Right, so Maureen, backing, binding, wadding, all of that. So for your binding, you're probably going to need uh, half a metre of fabric, which will cut you eight strips. Um, for your backing and your uh, batting and wadding, what I, I'm a long arm quilter, so I then, every time I put something on the long arm, or anybody brings me something for the long arm, I tell them that I need at least three to four inches on all the sides. The reason being is when I attach this to my rollers, um, I've got to have that, a little bit of that rolled over or pinned so I'm going to lose an inch or two with the pinning process and then the machine has to get you've got grips on the side of the machine as well so having four inches is ideal and normally what happens is I cut those off and then people can use that for binding later uh, but four to three to four inches all the way around if you're doing this on your domestic machine which is also very easily done I would also suggest about two inches all the way around the reason being is what you need to have a little bit of play you got to test your tension as well so even on a, on a domestic machine if you're wanting to test everything's working you can put a piece of fabric on top of the wadding you've got the backing you can then do some free motion to check that your tension is completely correct rather than doing it in the middle of your quilt so three to four inches on all the sides so if this is 64 uh, wide I would have it 70 inches that way and if it's 78 that way I'd have it 84 that way so that's how I would do it. And I try and keep them as a, if you can get the double one, the 108 backing, because then you've got loads left over that you can use for backing. Or if you've got le leftover projects where you've used the 108, you can cut them down into two and a half inch strips and make another one of these with your backing. 
Oh, we got some more pictures. Yes, please. Let's see. Ali. Oh, Ali, that's lovely. Oh, those fabrics are beautiful. That little blue one. Are there cacti on there? They look really cute. Another one ironing. I think you ladies are incredible. Thank you, Ali. That's great. <gasps> Progress so far from Jeanette. Oh, that looks so good. That is lovely. Oh, Jan oh Jan Jeanette, that's such a lovely message. Thank you, darling. It's a lovely design role, isn't it? And who's that from? Dawn. Hello, Dawn. My daughter took this picture. She'd need to. Look at you working so hard. That's lovely. Nice little machine that. Now Dawn, on the top of your machine, you've got that fabulous little pin cushion. I have been hunting for those. I'm very jealous of your pin cushion. That's gorgeous. Oh, that's brilliant. Nice to have you all here. Now Joe, we did the right hand last time. Should we do the left hand this time? I'm going to actually just show because I said when I stopped for a break, I was going to show you what uh, my friend J um, Penny was using. So Penny is using these barley pops and I've hidden them all the way over here. So Penny was using this uh, barley pop collection called Under the Sea. So I can show you those. Just a beautiful, beautiful combination of fabrics, these. Should we show these on the overhead? And I'll show you these on. Perfect. So I'll show you the colours on uh, number two first. You can see these barley pops here. Just excuse my sample over there. So this is the barley pop under the sea collection, which my lovely friend Penny is using. And you can just see how beautiful these are. Oh, I'm not getting this right. Can we zoom out? But what I love about these barley pop batiks is how beautifully, so even when you've got the two dark greens together, you can tell they're not the same. Each of them are completely unique, but they all just flow so beautifully together because you can just tell no matter where you put that green, it's going to work because they've not only kept the methodology, the, the dots the same all the way through, but they've used all the same colors through them. So when you see, I'm trying to find one with the colour. You can see all these beautiful greens in this one. They may not be appearing as green on the overhead because the overhead doesn't pick up the camera colour as well. You can see that they're just so perfect. They just work so, so beautifully. So that's our Under the Sea collection, which works really, really well. Uh, these are $39.99. Um, and then we've got our rainbow collar combination. Um, so these, this is the rainbow one over here. Again, these are $39.99 for 40 strips. Uh, and they're 40, they say 44 to 45 inches long. Beautiful, beautiful colorway there. And you can just see these all together out the bag. Really lovely combination, this. Really lovely. And then we've got the pastel range as well, which is a slightly softer, but equally as beautiful colorway. Lovely, lovely combination there, and you can see these beautiful fabrics, just how well they all flow together on all of them. And it doesn't matter how you lay them out, all the colours just pop so beautifully. So that's our pastel range. So those of you who are just joining us, what we're doing at the moment, it's our very first design roll race, um, a de design roll sew along. We're using these wonderful geometric uh, uh, panels that we make. They're exclusive to Sewing Street. Um, and we've got three different colourways for them. We've got this lovely berry colour, uh, which is this beautiful dark purple. Um, got this dark purple, oh, I'm trying to get this in line, sorry about that. Got this lovely dark purple going through all the way to the pink. My arms aren't long enough. All the way through to this lovely light pink. So that's the first, the berry one. Uh, then we've got our sunset one as well which is this gorgeous orange to yellow combination. And all three of these bundles together are on a special offer price today for £49.97. And that's to be able to just make sure that everybody gets a bit of a bargain or like a bit of a bargain and being able to then purchase this to be able to try and make the same one as well. This is now the Azure colorway. Oh, I've done this the very well. Oh, we're very limited on these now here, which is great. We had less than 20 before we went on air for this hour. 
So that's a really lovely little combination there. And that makes this quilt that we're making here. Um, and the way that I did these is I had my dark orange to light orange, light blue to dark blue, uh, dark berry to light berry. And then I went from uh, sunset azure berry, sunset azure berry and putting them all that way. And then I can't remember which way around I sewed them to the left or to the right. And that's what I came up with. Um, but I cut 20 inches off the very first, off one side of them to be able to get the movement. Otherwise, you're just going to have a block of all of them in a line. We've had a message in from Helen. Hello, Helen. Oh, she says, I'm amazing. She loves my shows. Just started quilting at the start of lockdown. Oh, Helen, you've made my day. Thank you so much. That's very kind. Thank you. And I hope you're taking part in this. If not, you can watch it on YouTube later and you can take part there. But please share your photos on social media onto our uh, fans page and to Sewing Street TV because I'm always on there. I love watching what you're all doing. And we've got Make of the Week every week as well. So did we say left or right? We'll go left. So we went right the last time. And that's how this all differs, how each one of you will get a different one and a different way around that you're doing it. So now we're back to sewing. So what we've got now is we've got our, uh, how many have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got 16 on the side, 16 on the side. So the 16 together will be 32, which will be our final strip, our final seam to sew. Um, and then we'll have our 64 inches on this way down. Right, so let's get started. And you can see I've got everything on the table again because there's a lot of weight now um, and I'm just wanting to make sure. Now, because there's a reasonable amount of weight, I have not done this on the rest of them. I do back stitch only on this one because there's a little bit of weight. You don't need to, it doesn't matter. I just like doing that just in case. But you don't need to do that for every seam. We're almost there. One more seam to go, which is about 80 inches, I think, or 75 inches or around there. I can't remember exactly how many. You can do the math if you like. Take 48, multiply it by 54, and divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, keep going until you get a number under 100. That's how long this will be. And it'll be 64 inches wide. But you can tell when you get to the size, it's a lot easier to sew these together because you haven't got so much weight, you haven't got such a long way to go, and you can just really concentrate on making sure your quarter inch is perfect. Because by now you've had so much practice, you've had 2,400 inches of practice already. Say that again. Divide by two again. And divide by two again. Eighty-one. So Joe's just done the math now and he got the number of eighty-one. I thought it was seventy-eight, but I was quite conservative when I did my measurements. So it'll be in that range of around seventy between seventy-five and eighty inches. Because obviously if your quarter inch is a little bit larger, your quilt will be a little bit shorter. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. It's a really good size quilt. You certainly can snuggle under that. And you can see I'm almost at the end. Almost at the end. I think it's only about 25 inches, 30 inches left to go. I hope this has inspired people to have a go. And if you haven't been able to take part and get everything ready before the design roll race, don't forget everything is on YouTube and it will be available. Um, I'm going to chat with Joe. I'm sure we can do it as a separate hour as well. So we'll be able to do that. Um, and then you'll be able to then always search for it and just type in design roll race and see what we've done and how we've done it. And we are done. My sewing is finished. So what I'm doing now is I'm making sure, being a little aggressive with my fabric there, sorry fabric. So what I'm doing now, now this is a long piece here, but I've got a really big mat, which is why everybody says, oh, you just like that mat because you have to sell it. Check my studio, I have the same mat. 
and it's really, really handy. I'm just rotating the sewing machine so I don't have a dip in my mat. Now, you're using a rotary cutter. What is my top tip on rotary cutter? Don't hurt yourself. Don't cut your finger off. Do not be sensible. Take it slow. Rather take an extra few minutes and keep your body all attached. So all I'm doing there is I've just moved this up to try and get this in a nice straight line. Now, if you wanted to press this, you're welcome to. I am not too worried because I square my quilts up at the end. So if my edges are a little bit out, that's okay because that is what works for me. Again, remember, you must do what works for you. I'm gonna go in maybe half an inch, a little bit more. And I am now standing over here and I'm facing that way. So you can see I'm standing over here and I'm facing that way. Uh, actually, I'm going to rotate this so I can cut the correct way. Do it safely. Always cut away from you. Don't put yourself at difficulty. Rotate the mat. It's easier than hurting yourself. But this is a quite a big piece. So this is actually probably not the best idea. Sorry, I'm being, I'm dithering. So all I'm going to do here, I am keeping it to the side just because I think doing it that way is less safe and the mat's off the, mat, the table then. I'm going to cut, and it doesn't matter which way you cut this, you can cut it with a pair of scissors if you prefer. I'm going to use a rotary cutter. I'm going to cut from there to here, stop, move my ruler down and then cut from there to the end. But try not to have your fabric move if you can, otherwise just reposition it if it does. Right, so I'm lining it up on... I'm lining this up on the edge there, but then I'm doing a couple of checks in the middle to make sure that I'm lined up there. Um, and I'm lined up there. So there we go. That was quite a nice, comfortable fit. So I get to that point and I stop. I just move that over a little bit. And the reason being is, is as I slide this down, the reason I've moved that back is now I can line my ruler up with the bit that I've already cut off. So you can see that that's now completely in line with that. And all I'm doing now is checking that this is all completely squared there, that square there, that's in line there. And there we go. My quilt is finished. So how are we gonna show this? How are we gonna do it? Are you gonna see it first or am I gonna see it first? I think you should see it first. So this is now gonna be your finished product. It's my different one of, it's a different one to this because I've cut them out the different way. And I'm gonna wait until Joe's gonna come and adjust cameras, I think. That's the end there. Boom, boom, boom. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's gorgeous. Can we put it on camera one? Oh, for crying out loud, there we go. Look how different that has come out. I haven't even been able to see it yet. I can only see it from the back. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I'm very happy with that. It looks almost like waves, music waves in the middle. That is lovely. Oh, I'm very happy with that. Waves on the shore. Well, I've got my cityscape in the background. Oh, that is lovely. Oh, I like that a lot. Well, I know that this is going to be the top of the quilt here. Oh, that's stunning. Oh, I'm very happy. Have you got any more pictures? Yay, let's see how you're all getting on. And I want your comments on these. Tell me what you think. Message in from Sarah to see. Oh, Sarah. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's very clever. That is really, really clever. Well done, I like that. Also with Barley Pops, and she used the, uh, a rainbow panel as well. That was our rainbow panel, wasn't it? I think it was. That is stunning. Well done. We've got Jo Collins. Hello, Jo. She's also from Tring. She comes to my studio. And these are the Confetti Ombre, if I'm not mistaken, by Moda. They're lovely. Well done, Jo. So now you can tell, so I'm just like stroking and looking and feeling and all that. This fabric is so lovely. I really like that. I hope yours is working out as well and you're as happy with yours as I am with mine. That was the one we've just made in our sew along. Have that for you to see in a few minutes. But as you saw, 
This mat is just perfect, especially when you're working with such big pieces and you need to make sure that you've got everything in a nice line. This mat is 34 inches by 22. It's a millwood mat. Uh, you've got the Imperial on one side, you've got the metric on the other, which is great. And you've still got those important angles if you want to use angles. The mat is 37 pounds 99. Um, so the metric measurements are 90 centimeters by 60. This comes, when you get posted out to you, you know normally when you order much bigger pieces, um, you pay more in postage. Not with us, you pay $3.95 all day, one price shipping for the whole day. So that'd be $3.95 in postage, and that's £37.99. And you can see logistically, this was the perfect mat to be able to use for this project. And there are so many times where you need a slightly bigger mat to be able to make sure you tr you're cutting. Because the number of times when you buy the smaller mats, I think they're about 18 or 20 inches, and your fabric's 22 inches, and then you're always cutting and then dragging it down and cutting and then the end isn't quite as straight as the beginning because no matter how you do it it isn't going to be completely right so a nice big size mat will make your life a lot easier we've had a message a question in from sarah hello sarah what color would you bind the quilt that is a really good question so for this quilt i would be binding it in yellow this is just my choice, it doesn't make it right or wrong. The reason being is that I think the yellow is such a beautiful color, and I don't use yellow a lot, but I think the yellow would work really, really well on that. But for this one, ironically, I wouldn't use yellow, I would use the dark plum, because I think there's so much movement and color in it, this just needs a nice, good, dark frame to center it. I might even put a plum, oh, look at me! Look, I'm just a completely, I'm ahead amongst the design roles. So that is just, but honestly, binding I think is a very specific thing and I don't pick a binding usually until I've quilted it. Because for example, this in quilting, I would probably quilt this in gray um, because I think gray would be a really nice neutral on that or a really bright pink. Whereas this one I'd probably quilt in blue because I think the blue flows all the way through the quilt because you've got it at the top. Uh, oh, no, you haven't got any at the bottom. Maybe this quilt's upside down. Let's do it the other way. But I would probably quilt this in blue because I, I love blue. So you can see that that's just worked really well. And the quilt's totally different if you turn it upside down. Now, my rotary cutters, I know everybody's always got the question of what ro rotary cutters do you use and prefer. Um, I use, I've got it here somewhere, I use this Millwood uh, rotary cutter. What I love about it is it's got this really nice um, uh, guard that you can pull up and down. Um, have you got this one as well? Perfect. Um, we've got this milled one, um, and this one is the one I use all the time. It's just, well, for me, I find it easier when I, because I'm so health, con health and safety conscious on these, I find that sometimes when I've got the grip and you've got to press the button on some of the other ones, I find that I forget, whereas with this one, I know the only time that I lift the guard is when the, the blade is on the mat. So if I come to the mat and I'm ready to cut, take the guard up there, push the guard down and pick it up. For me, this works really well. That's what works well in my brain. $8.99, it's Millwood, 45 millimeter uh, rotary cutter. I think it's a great, great product on that. Um, have we got the... Perfect. So there we go. We've got um, some fabulous, I'm really pleased with that. I hope you're, you're going to be pleased with yours. That one was made with our three geometric bundles. We've got our lovely azure colour here. So you can see all these amazing geometric designs. I'm just sliding this along. Gosh, you won't get threads on yours, I hope. Um, and you can see this really light blue colour on the end. Uh, going up all the way to out. Sorry, I'm going too quickly there, but we saw those at the beginning. I'll get better at lining all these up. Sorry. So you've got your dark blues there as well, and you can just see how beautifully these geometrics go all the way through. So that's our blue colorway. Um, and then we've got our sunset colorway as well, which is our orange to yellow colorway. Oops. So we're in the middle there. You can just see those beautiful colorways on that. I'm not going to go side to side because you saw these on the thing there. And I also I think I make everybody dizzy when I go side to side. But that's our beautiful colorway there on our yellows to orange. And then finally, we've got our berry colorway. 
which is so lovely. And again, you can see just how beautifully these geometrics work on them all. And I'm but if you don't, some people may find this a little bright and a little bit too modern. That's okay. We have other products. We've put together another fabulous bundle here as well today, which is our Paisley Marmalade. This is a, a lovely product we have. Got our Paisley Marmalade there. So I'm going to try and get to the end. There we go. Message in from Chris, of Christine saying, loves my quilt, gorgeous, fresh. Oh, Christine, you're very kind. Thank you. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. I'm not very good at sliding these. So there we go. That's our Paisley, what's this one? Paisley Marmalade. That's a lovely little colorway there. Um, and then we've got, so the, sorry, these are a bundle. So I'll show you the bundle when we're finished, because I think it's really good that you can actually see the colorways um, and how they work together as well. And then we've got our Copen Summer colorway. And I'll get you all the way, sorry, I'm gonna try and do this better this time, there we go. And there we go, that's our Copen Summer. Um, and I'm putting these on top of them because I think it's important that people can see um, how the colours go together. Um, and I'm just going to show you the pink first. This one is Paisley Grove. So you can see this is also a really lovely colourway on that. Sorry, I'm just, there we go. I'm hoping that this is an easier way of doing it, but it's not because my fabric has gotten caught. And it's really great. I'm pleased that we've been able to get all of these together because I think that the colorways work so well. So you can see that those um, two on the end here, we've got those colors, those designs on this one here, but in a totally different colorway, which just makes sure that the fabrics all work so well together because I think it just ties everything in. And you can see all together how beautifully these colorways go. Um, and then you've also got that wonderful synergy of having the same designs, just in a different colourway. So it's just a really lovely combination of colours there. Um, not sure that worked in that camera there, sorry about that. But we're getting better at this, so that's your bundle that you're going to get for £49.97. So we've also got our fabulous Early Bird, which is a really lovely product. I've not seen this one before. Um, we've called this the British Design Roll because it is probably very British looking at these. The colors are lovely. This is our early bird special for £12.99. And you can see all these beautiful different colors coming through. Forgive me while I just do that because my fabric fell off the page, the other table then. You can just see how wonderful these colors all are. And that's £12.99 as our, uh, all the, uh, our early bird special. And that'll be available until stocks last. So if anybody hasn't seen my amazing block of the week, um, that's going to be on after the show, which I'm very excited about. And we did so well with that yesterday, sold hundreds of them. And I'm so pleased and so grateful. And it's a really lovely project because we're going to be able to be taking part together, sharing on social media, because block one, I think, arrived the day before yesterday. So people have been making those and popping comments up and asking questions, which has been fantastic. Um, so if you've missed any of the shows and you haven't been able to catch them up, you'll be able to watch up on YouTube and be able to catch them on there. And thank you all so much for getting involved today. Thank you to Tracy from Quebec in Canada and all the people who've taken part. Thank you so much. And if you want to take part as well, don't forget we've got these fabrics available. £49.97 for the bundle for the quilt behind us. Really big size and it's just a really fabulous project. We've also had our fantastic 680 plus and you saw how beautifully it stitched all those, uh, all of those um, uh, design roll strips together. So really lovely little shout out to our wonderful Elna machine here, the 680 plus. And it's just been a really great day and I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. I'm going to turn her so she can have a little moment as she's just such a great machine. There we go. 
Um, yeah, really make sure you check out on the website. We've got our new categories section on www.sewingstreet.com. If you're not really enjoying using the website, you're more than welcome to call our um, customer care line. The number is 0800 001 4433. They're open as well and you can give them a call. If you've got any questions, queries, problems, anything about them, they're more than happy to help you. Fabulous team over there, they'll be able to help you just three, four minutes down the road as well. If it takes a little longer to answer the call, we're all doing the best we can at the moment with where we are. So please just bear with us. We're doing all we can. Look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you all so much for your time. Look forward to um, stay tuned for Block of the Week in a few minutes. And thank you so much. Go well. Bye bye.